Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Been spending most of my life living in the first sky of paradise. <laughs> check, 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 check. First guy Omaha Radio, first guy Omaha in the morning. In the morning. systems go everything rolling love it when the tech tech right hey on a monday hey good morning good morning good morning good morning you're listening to first guy omaha radio first guy omaha in the morning in the ds paul b buddy to god how you guys doing out there chat chimers ghost listeners radio listeners how was the uh mix this morning club 6 30 Man. Let us know, let us know, and thanks for joining us on this, what is it, Monday, April 1st. Man, ain't no fools up in here. We in here. <laughs> we don't no fools here. Nah, ain't no fools here. It's really no. going down. Man. Uh, I like it when the first starts on a Monday. It's, it's weird to me, but like I feel like, okay, let's let's go. If it feels like the first of the year or something, you know. Okay. I hit okay. the gym today or something, you know. Okay, not calling them James today. I'm still calling James. <laughs> We're still very unfamiliar. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, you know, you need a nice little introduction. My nice name is Mr. Magnesium. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good morning. We see Leah Keister giving us a happy, marvelous mo- morning to all. Yes. Yeah, appreciate you. Appreciate you coming on in. Uh, Pops gives us a good Monday morning and mad love from Las Vegas. Appreciate hey. you, Pops. Right on. Michelle Moreno gives us a good morning. I see Kimber Snipes in the chat. Good morning, y'all. What's happening? What's happening? Hey. YouTube going up on a Monday. Appreciate on a that. Monday. Yeah, yeah. Let us know, you know, how Facebook is looking. Let us know how you are feeling. How was your weekend? I, I do think, uh, you know, we don't really c- celebrate, but how was your Easter's? How, how was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot it was Easter. Yeah. 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 Okay. Exactly. Yeah. How was, your, how was your holiday? If you, if you, I know that I saw Kimber post some stuff. So it looked like okay. you had, had a good one. Kimber says, uh, I got to meet Zane. He's such a handsome, intelligent young man. Okay. <laughs> We were right calling on. the dude around here. The dude, yeah, the he dude. Was, he took him, took him, bought him his first comic book. Uh, uh, Friday, had had lunch with uh with Kimra and and Lacey, and then went to the comic book shop. So that was man. that was a good day. It was a good day. Cool days with the dude. Man, Mark Manor gives us a good morning. I went and bought me a couple of records. I went to the record store on Saturday and got me some, got me a few things. Okay. So. uh Mark said. Uh, Mark said. Sometimes we we get on the show here, and our voice is so soothing that he falls back asleep. So we're Not gonna right. wake it up. We're gonna get up. <laughs> we're gonna get on up. Now. Get up. <laughs> Top of the morning to y'all. Uh, Black dynamite in the house. Good morning. Good morning. Appreciate y'all. Hey. Uh, yeah. And Facebook. Facebook is working too. That's good. Yeah, thank you. Come on. So, on. Uh, I'm sorry. I was saying, coming on through. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. Uh, give us a give us a shout out and. Uh, you know, do do us a favor, share the show on Facebook and YouTube. Get as many people talking as we can, as many people in the session. Uh, we're going live for those, those of you that, that are just joining us. I know uh, I keep on uh, keep on getting getting hits from ghost listeners that are like, "Yeah, we come in, but it seems like y'all been talking about some some things already, and we missing some stuff." So I got to remember every so often to let y'all know what this is. Uh, it's basically a roundtable with uh, our constituents, our families, our our friends, our people. In our neighborhoods that care about Omaha, Nebraska, we do it t- three days a week, two hours a day, seven to nine, and uh, we bring on special guests. And uh, it's also kind of an education thing too, learning a lot about the legislature. The session is coming to a close soon, and so uh, yeah. we'll have senators on this morning to talk a little bit about that. I think this is the last week, actually. Last week of the session. Okay, I believe so. I believe so. Be sure to watch it because it'll be fired up, man. <laughs> No shoes flying just yet, but you know, still, still, <laughs> uh, still entertaining. Yes. <laughs> Kim, uh, Sue Kessler Hagen gives us a good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Kim says, I party this weekend. Uh, then there's a separate post about the library. What are you talking about? Oh, I party free zoo passes at the Omaha. <laughs> I see what you did there. You partied and there's free zoo passes at the <laughs> Omaha library today. Get there early. Yeah. yeah get your zoo yeah. pass going on. Yeah. If you uh, have your card. Say again. 
If you have your card, dig in. Mama God, Mama, Mama God texts me over the weekend. She's all excited. She got her zoo passes as well. And uh, I reminded her that uh, apparently there's a whole list of things that you can do uh, with your with your library card. So yeah, check it out, man. Oh, the library card. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, apparently we're the number one zoo in the country now. We used to be number two under San Diego, I believe. Mm-hmm. Now we're number one. So I don't know what happened to San Diego. Somebody died in San Diego or something. I don't know what happened. Oh man, I, I've been in the San Diego Zoo. Yeah. It was all right. It was all right. I ain't been to either one of the zoos, bro. I'm not a zoo dude. You still ain't been a. You still ain't been to the zoo. Not. Nope. Sure didn't. Um, I, I, I walked through some section of it when they had some kind of like nightlife DJ thing going on for about twenty minutes, but that's that's all. That's that's about it. I, I don't care about the beast of the field, man. What? Not the zoo dude. Nah, man. Nah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of. I think it's it's like depressing seeing them cats. It's like going to jail seeing some seeing the homies. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I guess you like that. They be looking at you like, get me out of here, man. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> set me free. Set me free. A black dynamite in the chat says, speaking of Facebook working, uh, did you see my stream shoot off Saturday night? Yeah, I did see. The, I saw the beginning of the stream. What happened to it? it, it what happened to the stream? Uh, black dynamite is a drummer, and uh, he was doing mm. a gig, and he set the camera down, and I, I watched a little bit of it and was doing doing something else. I had a roll, but. Yeah, what happened? What happened on that? Uh, also, uh, Ariel's four hundred two in the chat. What's up, Mayor Sanchez? Says uh, hit the like button. Please appreciate that very much. So, still just slowly ticking up on those numbers, uh, likes and subscribes on YouTube and uh, and also on TikTok and also on Facebook still. So appreciate everybody that does that, and I appreciate everybody that comes in. Friends of First Sky Omaha and drops off stuff too. Yeah, uh, that's a lot of discussion is is happening over on the Friends of page when we're not live. So. Uh, without further ado, man, um, it's, it's one of them kind of mornings. We're just kind of taking that Monday and easing in. Buddy, how you feeling this morning? How you doing? Man, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Uh, it was a beautiful weekend over the weekend. Got in the yard, got some things done. Ooh. Feeling good about that. Yeah, yeah. Got got my got my yard together. Got my yard together. So, oh, yeah, excited about that. Um, yeah, actually, I was kind of relaxing. I don't know why it was so, like, soothing. But, you know, I had my neighbors were grilling for Easter and, had the smell of the fresh cut grass. It's something about that smell. I, I enjoy. I enjoy. Springtime. Springtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what it is, man. Just you know, the birds are chirping, like you know, mm-hmm. things coming to life. So I'm feeling good. Feeling good. What's up, man? Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, Kimmer's telling us more about the the zoo pass. You can get you can get into adults. You can get into adults and six kids. Two probably two adults and six kids with this pass. Yep. Yep. Uh, you can go on any other day and get passes at Lawrence's. Now, that's the where I want to go, the gardens, Fontenelle Forest, Durham Museum, and more. Get your library card, y'all. You yeah. yeah, I'm saying, man, Mama Guy was excited, man. And, and I guess she's preparing for the babies to come in June. Yeah. So, yeah. Gonna yeah nice little, some things. New good library uh, spots and uh, stuff getting renovated and built and new new systems going in. And then, of course, you know, if you can get this pass and go to the zoo, the gardens, the forest. It's pretty dope. Also, what I do all the time because I d- I decided I had to quit paying for Audible because it was just costing. You know, I'm trying to get rid of some of these subscription services. Man. But uh, you can do but you can do uh, audio audio uh, books from the library. You can really? just rent them. Yeah, man, they got the whole system set up it's just like an Audible. Uh, you go check out your books, and if you check out the the uh, auto auto the audio version, then uh, then you can just you just download it and. And listen to it, or you know, download it. You play it through a, pro- a program, and then it disappears after a certain, like you put the book back. You know, mm. it disappears after two weeks or something like that. And yeah, so the last like five audio books I got, I I, I got from the library. No, oh, is, is Libby? Is that what you, is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. Kimber? Okay, okay. Yeah, I can't in the chat talk about some Libby. Okay, yeah, to check it out. Yeah, gets down. All the latest stuff. I listened to uh, Amber and Lacey's book again. Oh, dope, 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 dope. Yeah. Okay, okay. Again, reading is fundamental, y'all. For sure. Marlon Harrison in the chat says, good morning, First Guy fam. What's up, man? Hey. Appreciate you. I don't know if you saw yourself in, in the TikTok, uh, this, this, uh, the TikTok news brief that we did uh, Friday. I, I saw a picture of you with a suit on. I was like, I'm going to have to use that for, for the TikTok. That's what's up. <laughs> looking dapper, looking dapper. Looking yeah, dapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure y'all check those out also on YouTube Shorts. A uh, big shout out to everybody who's been, uh, you know, posting and commenting on those. We appreciate that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mark said he's a morning person. He says, I have to go get a physical library card. Uh, my year on Libby expired 
and they want to see me in person if they want to if want to continue living mm. you got to come in here mm. can't just get and be getting free audiobooks <laughs> hey but yeah go ahead and get it done man go ahead and knock it on out man yeah for sure and speaking of uh mark manner and uh you know i was thinking about the record store this weekend uh he said that the record store day is coming up uh you ever, you ever been out been over at the record store when record store day is happening no nah, i've never been out on, on record uh, store day i know I it's a thing Every time I try to go, it's a line down the street, and I'm like, I ain't getting out. I ain't getting out. <laughs> I'll catch him next time, next time. <laughs> Let me call Mark to ask him to hold something for me. <laughs> Man, any any plans, Mark? Any plans for a record store day? Record store? Yeah, let us know. Let us know when and let us know when the day is again, too. So we can we can definitely send some folks over there. Uh, Marlon Harris says, says Lawrence and Gardens is super beautiful, but bees be really bad and annoying. Oh, yeah, man. I can imagine. Getting down. Get out there and get stung. Uh yeah, the gardens is dope though. That's just, it's it's taking us another world. I love it. Love yeah. it. Out there. At any rate, man, get outside, y'all. Yeah, get outside. Get because, but right now we're inside, so I hope the air is good inside. <laughs> <laughs> hope everything is smelling nice. Uh, we're we're uh, gonna get this fired up. But again, thanks for everybody coming in and giving us the good mornings. It feels good, especially on a Monday morning, especially on the first. Hey. I don't know what it is. First of the month. I got a thing about it being the first and a Monday. I feel like I'm ready to get some things started. Okay. Well, hey, let's get started. <laughs> let's start the show. What up, what up, what up? Good morning, good morning, good morning. A fresh edition of First Sky Omaha in the morning. In the morning. I'm Paul B. He's Buddy to God. And you are Chat Chimers co-hosts. We appreciate you very much. Also, shout out to the ghost listeners that's coming on in. Share the show, if you would, on your page. We can get as many people in the conversation as possible. Uh, this is Monday, so we, we most likely will be talking to the senators if they didn't have to rush off <clears throat> this morning. Like they have to do sometimes. Uh, this yep. is uh, last week of the sessions. Is what you're saying? So uh, yeah. they're probably very, very busy. But uh, sh- but uh, shout out to the senators that have been coming each week, and hopefully we'll talk to them today. Senator Terrell McKinney, Senator Justin Wayne, and uh, we'll see what's going on. Brother Kasim was going to be on today, but he's in a little under the weather, so he's we're, we're going to miss him this this morning. And I have not heard back from Brother Sherman Wells this morning either, but he stays busy too. Lots of lots going yeah. on in town. It's a lot for these brothers to come weekly, so. We appreciate when they do, and I uh, appreciate them very much. Uh, but in the meantime, between time, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Some some heavy things happening. Got to talk about it. Before we do, Black Dynamite is saying record store like Homer's? Yeah, Homer's, bro. Yeah. yeah. I don't That's even know spot. the name of any other record store out here. It's Homer's. Homer's is the spot. Man, I'm, really, I'm trying to think. Are there any other record stores? Yeah, because there used to be like Drastic Plastic, I think, and I don't think that's a record store anymore. So, or it's it's, it's not, I don't know what it is. So it is, it is. They they do sell records, uh, mostly T-shirts, but uh, there are records there. A little more expensive, a little more on the expensive side. I don't think um, so, bro. I, I I think I know where you're picturing it, but it ain't there no more. I just went to that store that it used to be in. And it's some kind of like uh, antique store, or some kind of gift shop, or something. Hmm. Like that. Hmm. I think they. I think I remember them having like some kind of underground store somewhere. That. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mark, I'm not Mark sure. Helping us out, vinyl cup and grapefruit. Oh, okay. Okay, never yeah. heard of those. Never been to either one of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all my homeless for me. Yep. Jurassic Plastic did close. Yeah. Man, remember Lee Owens? World too. Wow. Okay, so I guess there's a few of them out there, but uh, Mark said he's gonna have 500 people in line. Lots of giveaways. It's 420 this year, so that so record record store day is line is falling on a 420. <sighs> First guy Omaha says, "Get your record collection together." Man, yeah. uh, we got actually some things planned. You know, I used to work for Hi-Fi House, so we got some things planned on having some vinyl get-togethers. Hopefully this year. So uh, yeah, get your vinyl collection together. You might we might have a little vinyl party coming up. Man, man, yeah. yeah. I actually been to a couple of all vinyl parties here like a couple weeks ago. 
Yeah, good vibes. Yeah, good vibes. Man, we used to do that in the nineties, like all the time, man. You, you get your you get your 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 carry bag, and you get just as many just as many can fit in that bag. Your 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 heaviest hitters, mm-hmm. and uh, get your fifteen minutes on the tables with them. It was good times. It was very good times, and nice uh, people. It was good to show people's collection and stuff like that too. So I'm with it. Oh yeah. Mama got in the house. Said good morning, fam. Watching on YouTube, but can't seem to comment. So dropped on dropped in on FB to say hello. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Wonder what's up with that. If uh, let us know if anybody else have any issues as far as the commenting or any of the tech. Yeah. So far, the tech is taken. So we'll see. Right on. Mark Matter saying there's a dozen around the area. Had no idea hmm. we had that many record stores around here. Uh, <laughs> Mark Mark's such a good guy, man. He could have just took up all all the customer like, hey, nope. <laughs> Homers is it. That's it. Just check us out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't know about the rest of them. Black Dynamite said, I think Vinyl Cup is next to Ted and Wally's downtown. Okay. Hmm, okay. Well, uh, like I said, Homers is it for me. And it's because of Brother Manor. So I, I will say that. I'm biased. Uh, you know, I've been going going to there since I was in my early twenties when he was when he had bootleg prince CDs. Man. I, I couldn't get nowhere else. So, you know, loyal customer. That's what Man. it is. Uh, nevertheless, get your vinyl your vinyl collection together for real. Like everybody ought to have one, just like a library in the house, as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, yeah, physical. Cool. Got to own it. Got to own it, man. Don't don't let the streaming age get you. <laughs> Nothing like owning your music. There you go. There you go. And your movies. Let's yeah. talk about it. Yeah, Let's yeah. I mean, Netflix will take that movie off at some point. Man, just saying. If you ain't got the Wiz on DVD. I don't know. You get your, get your collection together. Get your collection together. The important ones. Yeah. Uh, anyway, before <laughs> we can talk all day about this, seven seventeen right now. If you believe in the concept of time, got some hot stories today. What's what's going on in the news, buddy? Man, there is definitely some things. Uh, some things we talked about in the past. Some things that we haven't talked about. Uh, so you know, pending on whether or not we get the the senators, if they have the time this morning, because things are heating up in the legislature as the the clock is ticking. Uh, so, yeah, if we do get the senators on, we'd definitely like to ask them uh, more about this Inland Port Authority. Again, had a good conversation with all of you uh, last week about the Inland Port Authority being passed. Uh, but still a lot of questions lingering out there, especially how the board will be made up. You know, what's the process of selecting board members and, you know, what what, what is all of this entail? Uh, so definitely would like to dive into that. I also really hadn't talked about we kind of touched on it in our lightning round on Friday, but I definitely want to look into what's going on with the Nebraska Public Power District. Uh, again, uh, CEOs and board members getting uh, millions, millions, uh, basically doubling their salary. And uh, yeah, why? Why? Again, talking about public power. Could that have gone to maybe easing some people's power bills? Maybe, maybe we'll definitely dive into that. Uh, also, Malcolm X getting finally getting some recognition. Uh, this has been passed. So, uh, it, you know, again, we'd love to speak to Senator McKinney about this big victory. I think it's safe to call it that. Again, Malcolm X uh, Day getting officially recognized, not necessarily a holiday, uh, but still recognized as an official day. Uh, again, 19th, May 19th coming up, uh, Brother Malcolm's birthday. So definitely, definitely. A uh, big thing to talk about. Uh, also, looking at what's going on with uh, Douglas County. Apparently, there's some beef going on. This is a big story uh, that we'll be keeping our ear out for. Uh, some beef going on between Douglas County and the city of Omaha, kind of surrounding the Gonzaleses. Uh, if you remember, Greg Gonzalez and his brother was wrapped up in, in the whole Pace situation. Uh, and, of course, his wife uh, recently uh, got victor- victory uh, in a lawsuit that she put against the Omaha police after she was discriminated against and, and that is a fact. The court, uh, again, decided that that is what happened. And, and now uh, the city is apparently trying to get him fired from his position as the uh, director of 911 operations in Douglas County. So, again, what's, what's going on between the city and the Gonzaleses? would definitely love to get more information on that. Uh, Omaha World Herald just released an article about it over the weekend. So, yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Uh, also, we've been looking at following the money, although that's not this season's theme. This is the season of the love supreme. We're still in a very interesting this uh, Nebraska Business Improvement uh, Center, or, or again, it's a it's an area or a, a what I, 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 I Nebraska <laughs> Business Development Center. There we go. There we go. Because yeah, I'm thinking of an improvement district, but it's not an improvement district. It's a development center that a lot of us should be knowing about. Uh, apparently, uh, they've served two thousand people up to date, and I wonder if anybody in the community. Uh, knows about this. Uh, apparently, they've helped a, a uh, child care facility bloom over the last several years. 
And this is a resource we should all be aware of. Uh, so definitely talking about that and more. As always, if there's anything we're not talking about, you know, feel free to drop that into the chat if you have some information, some context. And uh, yeah, we'll try to get into it. Uh, again, big shout out to all the chat chimers and ghost listeners and co-hosts dropping things in, in our friends of. Again, we usually go there uh, for the story. So we have an idea of what is important to you, what it is that you would like to talk about. Uh, so yeah, yeah, again, keep that coming. Keep the conversation going. In the meantime, between time, Paul B. Yo, yo. It's the word, man. Yeah, Kimmer in the chat says, for clarification, Greg was never caught up in that situation. His brother was, though. Right, it, right. It, it did sound like you said Greg and his brother. I know. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I know you didn't, but it did sound like that. So we just want to clarify that. Thank you. Uh, and I think it's an important part of the story because, you know, it's Greg. Greg was, uh, he, he, I remember him running for sheriff. We had him mm -hmm. on the show. And he was running for sheriff. Uh, and, and there were some, some issues. And, and he didn't win the, the sheriff's bid. Uh, and then, and so the brother's just going to try to, you know, he just <laughs> go on about his life trying to get another job, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, so the, you know, it's like, uh, what's, re what's really happening here? What's really going on? I, I like to dig into this article because I was very surprised at the audacity, very surprised. Uh, Kimber, we were like, why? I wonder why. And Kimber, Kimber says, I don't know, maybe 700,000 being owed from the city. Hmm. Mm, a lot of this has been even even the whole pace situation, uh, even though there was a full federal investigation, there were indictments, um, you know, people were sentenced. Uh, I think there's one individual who's still planning to take it to trial. Uh, but uh, from from all accounts, it seems like that investigation was thorough. Uh, but even that even that still felt like a little um, retaliatory. And if I'm not mistaken, the, the city of Omaha were the ones who called for the investigation. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Again, what is going on? Uh, not only between, you know, the city and the Gonzaleses, but what's going on between the city and the county? Uh, mm -hmm. Apparently, according to this article, there's some some rifts happening between the city and the county. And, uh, and quite interestingly, the, the county is stepping up. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's go ahead and dive into it, because this is a uh, definitely, definitely a, a heavy situation. Uh, Kimra is giving us some more context, though, saying the pace situation was over 60,000. Uh, so, uh, again, that was that the amount of funds that were in, embezzled or, or were at, of, at, at question. Um, yeah, let us know if that's what you're saying. And, but again, out of Omaha World Herald as a report. And this is, again, the way they open this and frame this is very interesting. It says amid a growing rift between Douglas County and Omaha government, the chair and vice chair of the county board on Friday defended the hiring of retired Omaha police deputy uh, Greg Gonzalez as deputy director of Douglas County 911. Uh, so for anyone who might not be familiar with how this is set up, uh, apparently the county uh, has and operates the 911 call center, the 911 operations. Uh, so anytime you call 911, again, that is a county situation. Uh, but the city being, you know, the biggest area, having the most uh, population in Douglas County, uh, according to the article, uh, pays about 85% of the operational bill for 911. Mm. So, again, with that in the backdrop, it is very interesting that, uh, that again, the county board uh, for Douglas County is having to step up and speak about uh, the hiring of Brother Greg Gonzalez. Again, the county followed all of its hiring procedures for this deputy 911 director hire as they would for anyone being hired for the same role. Uh, that's according to board chair Roger Garcia and vice chair Mike Friend. Uh, they went on to say this includes conducting national and state criminal database checks, sending fingerprints to the Nebraska State Patrol for a full criminal background uh, and using the state patrol and FBI databases. Uh, on Thursday, however, Omaha Mayor Gene Stother, Police Chief Todd Schmader and Fire, Kathy, uh, Fire Chief Kathy Bosman uh, said the city intended to ask the FBI and U.S. Attorney's Office for, quote unquote, assistance in the city's dispute with the county. Uh, city officials and Douglas County Sheriff Aaron Hansen, who, quite interestingly, Greg Gonzalez ran against and lost to, uh, have said the background check uh, process used before Gonzalez's hiring was insufficient. According to City Attorney Matt Cuse, uh, who said since January that the city would reevaluate its agreement with the county for 911 services. And then on Wednesday, uh, city representatives apparently did not even attend a meeting of the 911 users group. Uh, which is an advisory board of agencies that use the service. Currently, Douglas County 911 provides emergency call center services for all city and rural police, fire, and rescue agencies 
and the county through interlocal agreements. Um, Garcia and friends said the 911 partnership has served Omaha for almost 30 years. So this is a long, this is nothing new. This is a long lasting uh, relationship and system that has been set up. Uh, again, they, they say that the whole idea behind this is to maintain public safety uh, every single day. Uh, to de- uh, and they even um, praise the staff as being dedicated and high performing. Uh, county board members also wrote in, in response to this uh, statement saying our top priority is to maintain efficient local government operations where our staff feel supported and the public is provided with a quality responsive service whenever the moment occurs that they need it, which again is their job. That's what they're supposed to be doing. So my question is, what is Stalter and Schmoderer doing? What is their whole point behind this this uh, pursuit of Gonzalez? It has does it have anything to do with the people of Omaha and Douglas County, or is there something more personal behind it? Uh, however, in their statement uh, issued Thursday afternoon, Stalter, Schmoderer, and Bosman said it would be quote unquote inappropriate to explain their concerns about Gonzalez. So again, no real answers as to why uh, they feel like this. Uh, Brothers should should not be working in the position that apparently he went through all the hoops and all the processes to get the job. Uh, of course, some could assume that it has something to do with the whole pace situation. I asked him again to clarify for us. Uh, Gonzalez's brother, Richard Gonzalez, uh, was uh, again investigated and named in an indictment and eventually sentenced uh, in, in regards to the pace situation. However, Gonzalez himself, Greg Gonzalez, was never questioned, was never named in, in anything, uh, and was never convicted of anything. He was never connected to any of this situation, uh, to which is very interesting because, uh, as mentioned in this article, um, it, the the investigation was thorough. Uh, so, again, it says in an interview Friday, Garcia, who is, uh, again, the Douglas County board chair, uh, said the FBI investigation was extremely thorough and they did their due diligence to look into the details and to pr- uh, prosecute people who committed crimes. He went on to say one would think that if there was anybody else left to prosecute, they would have done so. So, again, the guilt of Gonzalez, according to the courts in the investigation, is not there. So, again, what is going on between Douglas County, the city, Greg Gonzalez, and Mayor Stalter, Todd Schmoderer. Uh, what say you? Let's put it to the chat. Um, just, just a recap mm-hmm. from my understanding. What I'm understanding is um, that uh, <laughs> uh, so Greg Gonzalez, who ran for sheriff and didn't win, um, is now it now applied to be the head of nine one one, and it, the nine one one, not the head. No, he didn't apply. He's hired. Oh, he's he hired. is it. Right, he's right. running. So, so he, yeah. he, he didn't apply. He, he, he applied and got hired. Um, so he, so while he was, when he applied, they went through this whole vetting process uh, of mm-hmm. of him. And Douglas County was like, "Yeah, cool. He's cool. He's great. He'd be good for the job." I'm also jumping back real quick, thinking about some of the problems that like 911 has had. Uh, there's been like 911 has been down. There's been some problems this past year with with 911 too. It seems like what was going on. Mm. So. Uh, so maybe they were looking for new leadership and that job was open. So he went went for this job, applied. They do they did all their due diligence during the application process. They're like, yeah, cool. He'd be good for the job. They hire him. And separately, you're saying Gene Stothard and, and, and Schmatter and, and, uh, and the Hans, Sheriff Hansen and everybody is like, no, he shouldn't have got the job. We got to figure out how to get him out of this job. And then they get asked about it and they're like, it wouldn't be appropriate for us to tell you why we want to do that. According to this Omaha Royal Herald article, yes. Okay, so then we jump into speculation. We were thinking about his brother who got who got uh, convicted. Uh, this is the whole Vinny Palermo mm-hmm. thing too. I think Palermo got convicted. Mm-hmm. Uh, he obviously had nothing to do with any of that. Uh, his wife, Greg, Greg Gonzalez's wife, uh, Got, just won a lawsuit from the police department, Tosh Mater and them over the retaliation that she got. She got, re, it was like a retaliation thing that happened with her. Um, and so mm-hmm. now we're, now we're just, now we're jumping in going, Hmm. Okay. Maybe it sounds, it sounds like they're trying to try to just mess with Greg Gonzalez. I mean, what other conclusion can we come to if you don't want to speak up and say, these are the reasons why we have concerns. Why would it be inappropriate 
Mark Manor in the chat says, okay, no, Kimber, Kimber about to set me straight. What, what, what did I get wrong here? I just want to understand the, the story. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mark Manor in the chat says, well, we have, we have had Stothard for long enough to know that she is one of the most ego driven, vindictive and petty people out here, out there. Uh, we know the reasoning. I mean, I think, I think it's, uh, it's a missed opportunity. We, what, why, what would anybody think about this situation? If it's a missed opportunity to not speak up and be like, this is the reason why we're saying he's not good for the job. I don't understand why you would, why you would do that. Maybe, maybe, maybe there, maybe it's that, maybe it's just that simple. Like they're just that bold with it. Maybe they're just like, yeah, we don't, this is, we, we ain't, we're not going to say why we just don't want him. Yeah. I mean, to, to your point at this point, it is speculation, but I think it is a question that needs to be asked. Because again, you know, and, and and the when we when we spoke to Brother Greg Gonzalez, you you got to remember, you know, the statement that that really hit home as far as if they're doing this to me, who who was a, like Bruh. he and his wife were police officers, <laughs> they were a part of the police. So if that's what they're going through, what about the average everyday person? What about us? Yeah. Sounds like mob activity, Black Dynamite says. Marlon Harrison says uh, they just want they just wasting tax taxpayers' dollars on an investigation. It's sad that it's sad that this what we talking about instead of my ser uh, my serious matter. What's your serious matter? Is it my or more? Yeah, more. So yeah, yeah. It is. I mean, it is a shame, but like this is like you know, <laughs> this is what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with uh, you know. I mean, to me, I keep going back to the lawsuit with. Uh, with, with Greg Gonzalez's wife, mm -hmm. that was a you know um, she won that, and it had it had a lot to do with like the way that they retaliated against her by not uh, by discriminating against her. It was a discrimination suit. Yeah. yeah, she was like the top. She she was top in scoring on the test. She was already high ranking, and she went for a higher you know rank and got so looked they, over. They didn't like her, so they just they they did her wrong. She sued and won because, and then I believe it was appealed. It was appealed, and it and then it got she, she won, won again. again. Uh, so, and, and again, this was about discrimination. This was about uh, retaliation. This was this was that's that suit was all about that. So it wasn't just that, that they lost and it got and got to pay her a million dollars or something crazy. It's not just that part, but it's also the, what it means that the, what what it got what got proven was that they did this to her. That got proven in court. Yeah. So we, we were already kind of feeling like, hmm, this department is a little retaliatory. This department is a little, you know, this little we don't like something, we're going to do something about it type of thing. So, you know, what what can we assume here if nobody wants to speak up to say why? Why why y'all messing with Greg Gonzalez? What's going on? Why y'all messing with Greg Gonzalez? Mm. Uh, Kimra also giving us some more context. Um, um she says not only did she win, the city appealed it three times. Not, not once, not twice, three times. Uh, she also says the prosecutor in county suit also had a lawsuit against the city. Man. The prosecutor. Man. And, <laughs> right, right, right. And, and again, you know, on the surface, all of this seems very petty, but we're talking about the leader of the city, the police chief. That's what I'm saying. Like, if this is their mentality, <laughs> is this the leadership we really want? Is this, you know, what else are they capable of if this is how they're using their power just, should we have tyrants running our city and if you question. just are coming in on this this thing and you don't know who greg gonzalez is he was work, him and his wife were police officers right not just police officers high-ranking police officers they weren't just beat cops uh, again greg gonzalez was the omaha deputy police chief all right so i'm just saying the same thing like like greg's like brother gonzalez said when he came on here if they're doing that to us, which we're supposed to be blue lining with them, how they how they doing the rest of the city? Mm. Uh, I appreciate your clarity or your transparency, Kimra. She says, clearly, I'm biased. Kathy been my homegirl for years. Again, Kathy is Greg Gonzalez's wife who, who won the suit. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. From, from where I'm sitting, it, it's looking like it's quacking like a duck. It's walking like a duck. Shout out to the Gonzalez's, man. I don't know. That's 
That's that's messed up. Also, also, a uh, great sister Cindy Gonzalez is uh, with Nebraska World, Nebraska Examiner. We we do we do her stories all the time, and she she went from working from working with the mainstream to to dipping in. So shout out shout man, out to the work yeah. she's doing as a gangster journalist. She don't hold back, man. She she does the real work. Shout out, definitely shout out to her and, and the Nebraska. Maybe they don't Examiner. like that family. You know what I'm saying? Maybe this, maybe they just decided as that. Don't get the Juanita Johnson treatment. <laughs> there's that there's that uh Kimra also says kathy was a captain she applied for a deputy chief position and was passed over uh, even though she ranked the highest in the testing out of all candidates and again the to clarify again very high ranking deputy chief is directly below the chief it's a step away from chief i'll have to go back and um find that interview we did with greg gonzalez he, he had a lot of gems it wasn't just him running that we were talking about. We talked about a lot of stuff. So it, was, it seemed to be very relevant. Now I might want to have to dig into the archives and pull that one back up. Man, might need, might be time to bring them back. Yeah. Might be time That's to bring them back. Too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Again, uh, in the, in the statement issued by city leaders, uh, again, they, they state that it is inappropriate for the city to publicly explain the reasons for our concerns regarding Mr. Gonzalez. Those concerns can only come out during the course of a thorough background check which was not part of Douglas County's hiring process. Uh, we have pleaded with Douglas County to include the city as part of the background process. The county has refused. Okay, so we and we haven't jumped to that yet. We're, we're, there's actually beef between the the county and the, and the city with this. So I, why why is there a lack of trust and lack of working together there when when they you know this the nine one one thing especially is a joint venture sounds like so. Whew. So yeah, who who in the county is who's chiming up here? Like what what's going on? I, I hate to I hate to I got this kind of like laugh about it um going on right now. And I don't mean it, you know, I don't feel like that. I feel like this is uh we're, we're it's it's like close to some real proof about like how people are moving and it don't feel right and it feels it feels real crazy that uh that they would you, you know that the, that the, that somebody would be going after Greg Gonzalez this way like that with no explanation that's the point I man you could have easily came in here and be like nah we because we kind of think this you know and there's i don't know um we we got to wait for some explanation from them i'm not i'm not really sure what's going on but i think i think from mm -hmm. here on out it's going to be like what are you, why y'all doing that let us know and then the other part of this is uh and now what's what's going on with the county and the city yeah yeah, uh, that that was interesting. The way just the World Herald article kind of started that off, saying a growing rift between county and city government. Not sure what that is about, uh, but it is interesting. Uh, this whole situation, and again, what does this have to do with the people? Like that's that's your job is to you know make sure the people of the city are taken care of, and you know there's no bad actors, and you know what I mean like is it about the people? What is it really about? What is it really about? Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. Again, would love to speak to 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 you know, brother Greg, to see where he stands in this, and maybe even somebody from the county, um, yeah, uh, Schmoderer, <laughs> if they want to come on and, and explain, you know, Stothard Schmoderer, if they want to come on, yeah, we'd love to hear them. But you know, we'll, we'll see about right. that one. Uh, but I, I do think, in regards to why they're not um, expressing their, um reasoning that I, I think the city is kind of walking a fine line like if they say what they think and it turns out to not be true you know that could be defamation that could be libel so uh well then they just got to deal with all of us speculating and reasoning like reasonable human beings about about why this is going down so like i said and we'll, we'll see what brother gonzalez got to say as soon as, as soon as we can but uh yeah the people need some explanation it's all about the people it's for the people, by the people, we the people. We the Speaking people. of the people, we, we the got people. the people's person in the chat, in the uh, in the in the sideline here, waiting to come on. We're gonna bring him on. Untamed brother Sherman Wells is in the chat. Hey, hey, what's up with y'all, brothers, man? Talk about a, talk about a man hey. for the people right here. What's going on, brother? Man, same old same. You know, <laughs> work, 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 and uh, you know, I was checking this out. It's funny, y'all was talking about this topic because last night. Um, I released a, a statement basically about my opposing the mayor being reelected because of stuff just like this, Ooh, you know, yeah. um, yeah. and, and, and it's, 
it's just the fact that so even with this situation right here so when you talk about the situation with oha right they came on tv and said that the reason why they haven't stepped into oha situation is because they haven't gotten complaints from the people mm. right but then they mm -hmm. say that you know we can't just jump in it unless we get a complaint from the people but it's a double standard because was this a complaint from the people that you're talking about now if somebody yeah. complained about brother gonzalez don't that's know what i'm saying and right. then and then mm -hmm. when we tried to get the fbi to investigate mr blake's disappearance we was told by the fbi they can't come in until they get a message from the police but you'll go to the fbi over this personal stuff because we know that it's about uh the greg's wife suing you know come on man and, and so and even when uh mr sherman got shot by the douglas county sheriff they stepped in without a call from neither one of those people the girl or the the uh man didn't call and ask for assistance from the sheriff but he stepped in and he shot mr sherman in the chest without a call but but you won't step in for the people I'm talking about we've seen the reports of oha but we can't react over reports you have to make a complaint mm. but you're reacting over this report you reacted over uh mr sherman and his girl in the uh street arguing it's just a double mm. standard with this lady and so she is more worried about personal messy stuff than being a mayor for the city and that's why she got to go you know they, wow. it's, it's a double standard the way they operate in this city and it's it's real sad bro like because then when you come back down to it is it about the people no you're using your position to be on some messy stuff because if it was about the people i contacted the uh i contacted the mayor's office and asked them could they at least post mr blake flyer on one of their platforms and i got cool man tommy warren called me back and guess what? He never did nothing. Mm. So is it about the people that you serve that elected you? Or is this about using your political positions to push your personal agendas? And that's part of the statement that I released yesterday on LinkedIn, because here we go again with you and your personal stuff, using your position to 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 use your power of position to get into some personal stuff but you you cannot listen to a report about people living sadly and and poorly and you can't get into that unless they complain get out of here man yeah it, it's interesting because in that same article as far as oha um city inspectors did admit to seeing <laughs> code violations <laughs> they're like yeah we it's, it's not like you don't drive by and see code violations but you can't do nothing about yeah. it. And then, like, Come even on, with man. Mr. Sherman, they got on the news to to verify to justify why that deputy shot him. Said that it's a moral obligation as an officer that I had to step in because I seen what looked like a kidnapping. It's your moral obligation, but it's not a moral obligation to step in for these people at OHA. But it's what is this a moral obligation to step in against Greg because he got the job? What are we talking about? Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> you, 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 yeah, you, you feeling what I'm feeling. I, I appreciate this. The, I appreciate that context too. uh, you know, uh, comparing it to this other situation that's going on here that is not getting the same energy. That's real. That's real. Um, uh, I, I, we jump right into it, but before we, before we get any further, man, first of all, we just got to check in with you. How are you doing? How's the family doing? How's, how's, uh, how you feeling? Your work is, is progressing. And what's the latest on on uh, on Brother Levi? Uh, so I'm feeling good. The family's good. Uh, we went to church yesterday. Got some of that good old word, Pastor Ballard. Okay. You know, Assembly of the Saints. I would implore anybody who's looking for a, a church that ain't too churchy to come to come to Assembly of the Saints. You know, you can hmm. go to church and then uh, go to the workout gym area. There's a workout there. You know, they got a podcast room. They got a diaper giveaway mm -hmm. room. You'll exercise them demons yeah, out. Yeah, 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 man. They got a, a area for the kids to play the game while they're there, you know. Uh, a beach yeah, bro. Got the beach yeah, stroke. come on, man. Yep. So it, it's not your typical church. But, yeah, we got that word yesterday, so I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, family's good. 
And as far as Mr. Blake, um, we are actually still in the process of raising money. Uh, Shonda and me and Terry decided that we just going to fork over the money for the billboards ourselves. So that's what we're doing. We're putting together that, um, the thousand dollars for the billboard. Um, thousand dollars. Don't they have some, some, uh, situation with the billboards where they, they give away some for free for certain causes. Uh, so they gave us a discount of four seventy five per billboard. Um, normally they like 1500 a piece. So, okay. Uh, I was not able to get that discount myself. I had to send a, one of my sisters with a different skin color to attack that situation. Mm. And she was able to get the deal. When I called, it was 1500 no ifs, ands, and buts, you know. Um, but when I sent mm. her. Yeah. You, got, you got some white people on the team, bro. White people on deck. <laughs> Man. <laughs> you, you got to sit the white woman over. Yeah, yeah. Man. Well, you oh. know, when that happened, um, yeah, we was able to get the uh, the discount. So, unfortunately. Um, so if anybody wants to help financially with oh, that, yeah. is there a way that they can donate or is there like a... Yeah, actually, you can cash app Shonda. Um, let me see. Brother, man. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> These people, man. <laughs> uh, let's see. So her cash app is dollar sign E-K-S, capital E-K-S, H-O-N. That's it? Yep. E-K-S-H-O-N. All right, here we go. I'm putting that, dropping that in. Yep. There you go. So anybody wants to assist with, you know, helping purchase the billboards to to continue with the search of Brother Levi Blake? Yep. And the reward for any information uh, leading to his uh, being found is up to, what, 15 grand now? It's up to 15 grand. Yes, sir. Um, And that is the uh, still the 5,000 from the police. 5,000 from the Empowerment Network and 5,000 from Julian Young. Okay. That's what's up. Uh, and and if uh, for, for that, if anybody else got some 5,000s that they want to donate to that, yeah. uh, uh, do they, where do they go to? to that where, would uh, go to the um, American National Bank Okay, right there. Uh, well, they have a lot of locations, but um, we're using, we, we set it up at the one on 30th, but any American National Bank, if you want to donate for the war fund you can go there okay yeah. sounds good and of course they can always get a hold of you you're everywhere even on oh, linkedin yeah. these days on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah so where is linkedin that? is uh more where the political stage people they all trying to you know they got their ties on and they okay you no know, that's where all the major political <laughs> those people so yeah, like their ties the on. so they're not using they're not using twitter much anymore as for, for that oh, oh man twitter is a beast yeah they still use it twitter there's mm-hmm. some stuff going on on twitter man oh man you know 30 minutes of being on twitter you reevaluating human existence <laughs> man it's out of control man like all i've seen is it, 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 it is a bunch of political arguing um violence out of control violence uh Man, mm. and then you right when you think you want to move out of Omaha, you like mm, I'm I'm safe here. <laughs> if something happened here, at least my people can pull up. Cause out of man, I was watching Twitter yesterday. A little girl and her mom was walking down the street, and the lady just walked by and slapped the crap out the baby. You know, what? for no reason. Yeah, it was an unprovoked. She just slapped the baby, and uh, you know, her mama had to turn around and put them hands on her. But you know. Yeah, all around the world, everybody getting beat up and stabbed up, random stuff. It's just man, you need to change. You need to change your algorithm on Twitter, bro. Man, man. <laughs> oh no, man, it's just man, Twitter. And then I see all the, you know, the Don Bakers and political people attacking each other on there. So yeah, yeah. I just seen a post from that. Precious this morning saying that Megan McCain blocked her on Twitter <laughs> for, <laughs> for checking her about something she said about Precious, you know, on TV. So yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Precious, you know. She gonna kick I remember that. Ass. She tried to act like she was the head of the uh, the head of a uh, uh, DEIA. Uh, oh yeah, I mean not DEIA. Was it? Uh, uh, no, what's the what's the uh, the school thing? Um, oh, CRT. <laughs> the head of critical race theory, and, and she, <laughs> she 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 called her that on TV, and she was like, "Nah, not having that." So she went in. So that's funny that she's blocked now. Yeah, she's blocked. Now. Yeah. I think that was on Instagram this morning. I was just laughing. <laughs> You know, Megan McCain don't want them problems with Omaha, so she better stay wherever she's at. 
nah, definitely not. Hey, man, hey, how, how, not. how much time do you spend looking at social media each week, each day? Uh, man, you know, I'm not a scroller, so I usually post my stuff and leave. So this morning, um, when I got on Instagram, I was actually going to check something. And uh, that was the first thing I seen was Precious Thing. Last night, though, mm. I was on Twitter for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, um, just and it just showing my wife, like, how crazy it is, you know, reevaluating human existence again. You know, hey, man, man, are we meant to be here with our behavior and our attitude? Because, man, is this stuff really going to work? We're like, these people is out of control. So, mm. you know, but um, I do be on YouTube a lot, uh, usually, um, if I'm on there to, to find out new news or what's going on in states where I got other family. You know, but my advice to most people is usually don't scroll social media because it's like reading people's mind and that will in in turn cloud your mind. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and it'll put mm-hmm. you in a stressful situation. So it's like being a mind reader. And I just I don't advise nobody to do that because it's if you especially if you're an empathic person, you know, um, you don't want to do that. You don't feel every so, like oh, Post in gold. Post your things in gold. <laughs> yeah yeah actually uh caught an interview with elon musk over the weekend and he was basically talking and pushing the whole theme of um you know absolute free speech on x now you know formerly known as twitter so yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's all you get oh, okay. on twitter absolutely yeah yeah yeah, yeah so the reason why i'm asking is because uh is because I, I how do you so 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 where do you get your local news because you can you seem to to always be on the pulse uh is it just word of mouth is it just you talking to people do you do you open your your social media and talk to people uh via a direct message all the time or people you just know that many people that come to you and tell you the news yeah. how, as far as locally how do you get your stuff it's usually people telling me uh even when, like the mayor put in her thing about re-election i got a, a text from the world here like do you want to give a statement about the mayor's re-election uh-huh. like, I sure hmm. will. <laughs> How much you They was over in an editorial meeting going, we, we, we'll get, Sherman will say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going to get yeah. here out. So I get a lot of news from, from people just reaching out to me. Um, Miss Wanda sent me stuff to keep me updated, definitely. Um, and yeah, yeah and like my wife and my daughter, they both, they both be on it too. So yeah, okay. they'll point it out and then I'll go look at it and check it out. Yeah, but um that thing with Greg, I just happened to see a glimpse of it on the news and I already knew what it was about without diving into it because, you know, you're talking about the city and their retaliatory, you know, they always do the same thing. So it's not new. It's it's just what they do all the time. They use their positions to, uh, you know, to combat things that they feel that's personal. So, yeah. I mean, kind of think of, you know, how the protesters were handled in, in uh, Freedom Summer. And, you know, they were all piled up during COVID, yeah. <laughs> mid-COVID, piled up in that holding cell, um, you know, for hours and hours. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, you can think of some examples. Yeah. Uh, but I'm kind of curious just to pivot a little bit. Is there anything else that you're working on, anything else that's on your radar, anything else you've been tipped off to uh, recently that, uh, you know, you might want to share? Uh I don't know if I'm going to share it. Uh, well, okay. you know, I think, I I, I, I don't know, I'm going to talk to Brother Ewing about his run for mayor, you know. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he is a viable candidate. Uh, I do want to bring on a couple of ladies, uh, well, probably about three ladies who are, one of the main things we've been going over is the issue of us getting legal representation in Omaha when it's facing the um, government um, because most lawyers in this town is tied to the government. And so whenever you have an issue with the government, you can't get legal representation. It's Mm. it's tough. Mm. And um, going outside of Omaha is usually the only way. And so I have three women who went through some things um, that, and we still working it out to, to talk about it without them, exposing a whole case but you know one had mm-hmm. a surgery here um and <laughs> like they botched her surgery and she tried to sue the hospital and nobody was able she did get a lawyer but he been ghosting her one of y'all favorites and then um there was mm-hmm. a another woman who went to a dermatologist to get some work done and they put this stuff on her face and it broke her out really bad 
And um, she ended up having to represent herself. And then, of course, Miss Nikki, who I assisted with, um, I did put that in that video you uh, that I got on Twitter when I was talking about uh, harassing Edwards Auto Group when one of the managers um, put a noose on her desk because she, him and her had a disagreement over James Scurlock and how the situation was handled. And we could not get a lawyer for her for nothing to face wow. Edwards Auto Group because they're Edwards Auto Group. I mean, they're the biggest auto group in Council Bluffs. And so, um, yeah. And then uh, the situation with um, what was his name? The, the police union uh, president when he elbowed that sister in the chair. Uh, and again, we couldn't get no legal representation. And that situation, again, the mayor dropped the ball because when the sister reported it, the mayor, instead of putting it through the proper channels, she had an issue with Steve LeClaire, the president, the fire union president. And so instead of her putting it through the proper channels, she exposed the, the initial police report to the news. And that is part of the reason that the arbitration found him um, not guilty or let him get his job back because wow. she had a problem with him because they endorsed Heath Mello back then, you know, over her for mayor. So she took that as an opportunity to say, now look at him. He's elbowing women and call and saying white power in her ear, which the woman had a case. But once you do that and the arbitration basically came back and said, well, it seemed like it was personal. You know, the mayor, she released it and he got tried in the, in the eyes of the public before he ever got to go to mm -hmm. court. And plus, we've had other firefighters who's done things to women and didn't get fired. So he shouldn't be fired based off just the mayor's personal problem with him. And they went through millions mm -hmm. and millions of dollars to fight this case. But it wouldn't have been like that had she just left it in the legal system first. And then it could have came public, but she hurry up and made it public because of her personal problem with Steve LeClaire. And so again, this situation mm -hmm. goes back to that situation with her always having something personal with somebody and using her position to try to expose stuff and do stuff. She just, she's a messy woman, man. She got to get out of here because she, she's shown time after time that she don't care about North Omaha, you know? And like I said, she said, keep stationing Tommy Warren down to, the Vivian to, to my cousin Vivian's um, historical marker to say she don't want it nowhere on city property. You don't got nothing to do with North Omaha because you never come down here. So why is you sticking your nose in that and you sending these two clowns to come down when you don't even come down here to see anything anyway? But I don't want it on no city property. Like, lady, get out of here, man. Mm. It's too much with her, man. She She's not for the people, and she's definitely not for North Omaha. So if anybody in North Omaha votes for the mayor, you're voting for your own demise because this woman has no regard, no care for us, and she thinks because she gave Crawford that extra land that we all going to be, yeah, mayor, no. Get out of here. Yeah. Uh, speaking of who's running against her, Brother Ewan, uh, Tony Johnson in the chat says, need further reasons on how John Ewing is different. Nothing so far shows me. Yeah. Um, uh, so that so I think that that voice is a few. You know, I've heard this a few times from people in the, yeah. in the chat and some ghost listeners about that. Um, he is a, he used to work in the police department, um, and, and and he's and he's Douglas County Treasurer now. So he's kind of been in this in the situation. I've seen pictures with him and Stothard, and you know, yeah. um, and so it's it, it is it's a valid question, you know, from the, the perspective that we are coming from, you know, uh, in our world. Uh, it is a little bit like, I mean, ain't he just doing whatever? Ain't he just one of them type of type of feeling? Right, uh, kind of, kind of, sort of. Yeah, we got to explore all options. Yeah, um, and, I don't think we just need to settle with just Mayor Stothard again. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got that same sentiment that Tony Johnson was saying as far as like him being in positions and what have you done, you know? So right, and, and so on the on the neighborhood level. Uh, you, have you ever you ever worked with Brother Ewing on anything? Is that do you know him from that level, or you just know him from from the, you know, from him being a county commission, and all that? I mean, not county commission, um, treasurer, just, yeah. just treasurer, yeah. Okay, so so okay, yeah. That's, I mean, I, I, like I said, I, I see him, I see him around. We say hi, 
uh seen him at certain events and stuff like that uh but yeah most most i know about him is that letter that be coming like where your registration at bro <laughs> where your registration at that time where your tags yeah, yeah. Your tags together yeah, so yeah. Well, uh, we're we're still about a year out from the uh, mayoral primary, so that that is interesting. I kind of anticipate more names being thrown into. Let's the hope so. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. As of right now, it's Stothard, um, um Ewing, uh, also a Festerson and McDonald's names have, have popped up in this whole situation as far as you know thinking of running uh, for mayor. So I will definitely be looking out uh, on that situation yep, yep. again by the year. There you go. Uh, as far as your social media stuff is concerned, when you get your message out, which which platform do you use the most? Or do you um, so I try to stick with the numbers. So right now it's Facebook, um, tw- uh, LinkedIn, and uh, YouTube. Okay. Yeah, and LinkedIn, you know, you might not see or people don't respond. So they have a thing on there called impressions. So if people even click on your stuff, it's counted as an impression. So um, mm-hmm. I can see that I have a lot of clicks, but people won't say nothing. But when I see people talking or hear people talking about it, they must have got it from there because, well, and they could have got it from Facebook, too, because my page is open. So anybody, you know, 95 percent of the content, 95 um, percent of the audience on my content on Facebook is now followers, which is crazy to me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> People just lurk. Yeah, they, they just, just lurk. Bro. You, got, you, got ghost, you got ghost listeners too, huh? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. oh yeah. yeah. What That's what's up. Uh, j- jump in the chat real quick. I just want to. Uh, uh, people are kind of commenting on this subject still about Twitter and mm-hmm. and so on. Um, Kimber Snipes says I met neighbor a, a neighbor and they had me follow them on Twitter. You can learn a lot about people by reading that page. Her her and I will likely not be hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, Marlon Harrison said Twitter is a mess, but I use it because there's still some good moments, uh, yeah. which I think is real interesting. Um, uh, and then also, let's see, we're we're still we're also talking about the the, the mayoral race here. Uh, Marlon Harrison says, "Yet Mean Gene is never in Omaha, but always trying to pull uh, pull her two cents in situations that he doesn't oh. really care about." <laughs> And hey, Paul, I sent you that statement I put up on uh I inboxed it to you on Messenger uh, yeah. about what I said about her. And that's part of what I said. Mean Jean is unseen. She just <laughs> nobody sees this woman no more, man. She <laughs> Mean Jean is unseen. You know, I had to put a little slogan out there for him to, to use. Yeah. Yeah. You, better, you better call Ewing to get some yeah. shirts made on that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Of course she makes it, you know, for the Monopoly photo out though. I know y'all saw that. Yeah. The Monopoly photo. Yeah. <laughs> Omaha Monopoly. That's, yeah, but won't step yeah, in yeah, to yeah. help none of the residents at OHA. Yeah, that's no statement on that, huh? Not that's a crazy. statement. Besides, we don't have a um. What she say? No we, we don't have no complaints until mm-hmm. we see complaints. But we we see the articles. We see everybody talking about it. But we can't step in. <laughs> we see the code violations I mean, more than the articles. We see it. Yeah. We see all of it. They see the big bug videos. And that's, you know, what's crazy is Joni Poor, she told me that at one of the city council meetings that um, I seen the uh, mold pictures that you posted, but nobody complained to me about it. So I couldn't react from a post. Like, wow. Yeah, but you, but saw, you it. saw it. You saw it. So this uh, actually kind of gets me into something that I've been meaning to talk to you about uh, this North Omaha Betterment Housing committee uh can you kind of get more information on that north of all betterment housing committee that is uh miss cheryl weston the beast that woman is man she that's the paperwork queen right there that's what that uh but you know she she put us on there i'm on that uh committee and uh it's a few of us so it's really just double checking oha the chin check of mm. oha uh so we okay. went to we go to some of the meetings now in the towers. Um, she attends those OHA early morning meetings downtown. Um, and speaking of which, like I said, we went to one at Evans Tower and I met the new manager there. And surprisingly, she was really decent. Like she actually cared about the people. She listened to them. She was hand typing in their work orders because the call in system wasn't working. Um, mm. She. She was going out of her way to respect the elders. And so that's what I uh, appreciated about her. 
And so I kind of backed off of Evans to let her get a chance to finish cleaning up what she's been doing down there. So shout out to her. Um, I think her name is Kayla. And yeah. Uh-huh. That's good to know. I'd like to hear some more about that at some point. That's 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 good to good to hear some, yeah. some you know, action happening yeah. down there. Who can they contact if they want to be a part of going to the meetings or getting on the team or any? Uh, I would say they contact Miss Cheryl Weston uh, on Facebook. Her name is Conversations with Cheryl Weston, and um, if they're interested in being a part of that oversight team that's uh, keeping their foot on OHA neck, get a hold of her. Because mm-hmm. she, she, you know, I'm, I'm the soldier. I'm just placed where I'm placed by these, uh, these real people with this real paperwork and the documents and the proof. Because she's one of them people, man. She got all the paperwork, all the documents, all the proof. So, so what's what, General Weston? General Weston. <laughs> man, there you go. There you go. Ah, well, yeah, we appreciate the work that you're putting in, man. We definitely appreciate that. Uh, not just you, but you know, Sister Cheryl Weston, the whole you know North Omaha Betterman Housing man. Team. Because uh, we, we need some eyes on it. Obviously, the, the eyes that are supposed to be on it aren't doing the job. Uh, mean Gene, looking at you. Uh, also, HUD has been very quiet on this whole situation, which, again, is interesting. As you pointed out, they, they'll call federal, you know, federal assistance on, on what they care about. Uh, but, but when it comes to getting HUD to do what HUD is supposed to be doing, uh, then it's an issue. Yeah. Uh, so again, we'll, we'll definitely keep our eyes on that. And yeah, I appreciate you. Big yeah. Time. Uh, I just, I know I ain't supposed to read the chat, but somebody asked about that meeting last Thursday. I did. I did tap in there for a little bit. Cause I got a call from uh brother. Um, what's his name that worked with Cornell West. Uh, Anthony uh, Rogers, Rogers. Right. Oh, Anthony yeah, Rogers, right. yeah. So he was like, man, can you show up? So I showed up, I really showed up to make sure I could ask my own questions, you know, um, Mm-hmm. And so, uh, <laughs> but no, it was, it was all right. I mean, again, um, I was just there. A lot of people was, oh, oh, what is he doing here type stuff? But, you know, I wasn't there on nothing. I'm just listening for a quick second, probably spent about 30 minutes and left. But mm. again, you still just can't put a bunch of familiar black faces on a poster and sneak into our neighborhood under that disguise and think that I'm going to support it. So I'm still not team whatever they are until we get the answers that y'all asked on here from the beginning and so if i'm if i'm clear you talking about that uh a community meeting yeah. that that the uh non yeah. had um okay nebraska for us is, was the non yeah. uh, okay okay so you don't feel like much came out of that uh, i was only there for about 30 minutes so i didn't get to see the whole thing but again um without being able to answer the questions that was asked on here, we don't need any more savior complexes coming in and and feeling like they have to put us together for us to have meetings and that type of thing. We don't need that. We can meet and and put our own stuff together. But um, I know a lot of people is, is a a teaming up or a part of it or whatever um, because the flyer had all the people on it, but that, that still don't convince me. I don't care who you come in behind. It's like a shield. You know, you, you got a shield and you still shooting from behind the shield whenever you get a chance. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, still would like to know who's on, on that yeah. board. Still would like to know where some of the money is coming yeah, from. Yeah, so. so until those questions are answered and the, the motive is revealed of what the, the organization is doing, I'm never going to just jump aboard or something because I see everybody else doing it. Yeah. Well, fellas, we didn't, we didn't let uh, Brother McKinney wait long enough. I know we got things to do today. We're going to bring him in. We appreciate right. you. Appreciate you. Yeah. Thanks for coming in this morning, and hopefully we'll see you next week. Uh, for those of you that were wondering where Brother Kasim was, he hit me this morning said he was a little under the weather, so letting him rest in this morning. But we appreciate uh, Brother Sherman Wells coming through with the knowledge as per usual. Untamed, everybody. Check him out. He's everywhere. <laughs> Even on LinkedIn, bro. You know, <laughs> you go on there and see if you got your tie on there too. When you get I do, I did, I did put that new, them new pictures on there now. So you was looking clean in the pictures, bro. <laughs> clean. Hey man, hey, Turbo man, shouts out to that brother. He a part of our church, so he told me like, man, I need to get some pictures of you. Hmm. Yeah, that that was a uh, pretty good. So I appreciate that, brother. That's what's up. <laughs> All right, All right, brother. Have a good one, man. All right, peace, 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 peace. All right, cool. Without further ado, we got Brother Terrell McKinney, Senator McKinney in the house. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing, brother? I'm good. How you doing? Yeah, it's, well. it's Monday and it's the first. It makes me feel like I, I need to start something new today. Yeah. So feeling good. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, how, how you feeling, man? Uh, again, the hour is kind of ticking down in the, the session, the legislature. 
Um, you know, how, how are things? Apparently got a couple victories uh, since we last spoke to you. Uh, how, how's things um, going? Everything's going okay. Just trying to get get ready for this last week and a half of the session and try to get the things passed that need to be passed and get ready for these late nights. Man, yeah. man, yes. Uh, as uh, Rick Fulton in the chat reminded us, he says seven legislative days left uh, for Lynn Han Wayne hollering. I'm not sure what that is about, but again, the the, the uh, clock is ticking on that. Um, before we get into what's coming up and the kind of waning hours, I do want to talk about you know some of the victories last week. We kind of talked about uh, the Inland Port Authority bill finally passing. Uh, looks like uh, you got a, a lot of support, unanimous, thirty-one to zero. Vote. Yeah. Uh, but there were some questions you got. Yeah, it moved uh, over to uh, select. Um, we still are, are going to have to do an amendment. When we got the last amendment back, uh, there were some things unintentionally left out of that amendment that we got to fix mm. on select file. So that's all. A lot of what the confusion was, was that some stuff got left out that wasn't supposed to. And we, we just going to fix it on select file. But I think. You know, we'll have the support. I, I, I think we will. You know, you never know. I don't, <laughs> I don't like counting counting wins until they happen. But I think the support right, will right. be there. But we just got to fix some things on select file. Uh, were you surprised to get the unanimous vote to to get it to the next stage, or um, was that kind of expected? Um, yes and no. You know, because initially there was an effort to probably try to kill it and then after mm -hmm. we had some discussions we uh that didn't happen and then we got that unanimous vote but it was more so based around the language and the amendment and having to fix some right. things honestly right getting the language yep. right um and, and and in regard to that i did have a question as far as what is the language surrounding how the board is made up uh, again we understand based on the report it's a nine member board uh, two of which have to be from the community. Is this a uh, mayoral appointed? Is there an election process, an application process? How, how does this work? Uh, so they'll be appointed by the mayor, but it'll be so the board will be the mayor or the mayor's designee, at least two members with experience in real estate development, at least one member with experience in community organizing and development, at least one member with experience in financial services and budget oversight. Then there's a community advisory board, which would be nine members, at least one, at least two owners of residential property located within the inland port district, at least two owners of businesses located in the district, a member of the city council, a member of the legislature, uh, and a youth representative or or someone who works closely with the youth. Okay. Yep. Seems like a pretty diverse board. I mean, she has and, and again, all of these. I said she, she's got to pick it though, right? She's the one picking that board. Essentially, yeah, but I mean, people got to apply. I think when people like, I I understand the concerns about her appointing, but what I've seen is the reason sometimes, and, and not to make an excuse for it, because I still don't think it's the excuse for a lot of these boards not to have a lot of diversity, but the issue sometimes is. We got to make sure people apply like in like a lot of people apply mm -hmm. i'm being like we can't just say all right this board was created and a couple of us apply and then be surprised when it's not diverse but if we a lot of us apply it it's still you know they pick but i, I think we if, if more people apply i think some of that stuff will change Mm. especially the way mm. this is written mm. having a bigger yeah. pool of applicants um and so once you know individuals make up this board what are some of the decisions that will be made I, I understand to the report 30 million is planned to be transferred uh into the control of this board so in the um, language it says that it, it will require inland port authorities within the city um to create and operate an innovation district hold quarterly public input meetings conduct the community survey only use grant funds in the Port Authority area, provide direct oversight and operations of the Innovation Hub and oversight of the uh, airport business park project or whatever happens with that. Mm. Form a community advisory committee, 
hire a consultant for financial planning, support housing construction, and submit reports to the uh, legislature. Okay. So how, how do people apply? If they, is, is, the, is the application uh, process open? Uh, where, do, where do they go for that? Do you have any information on the application process? No, that's not open yet. The bill still has to pass for oh, right, right. operating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. got it. Yeah, how many uh, more hurdles are left in there? Uh, just two more rounds of debate, like select file and final reading, and then getting signed by the governor. Hmm. Uh, any um, conversation about the governor's support? Uh, and, and what is the governor's office saying about this in the portal? So Dorian? far, they're cool with it. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, we've seen some vetoes come yeah. down already, so you know it's definitely worth asking. So far, so good. Um, okay. Well, okay. before we go, okay. get any further, I do see we have a, another special guest in the wings. Uh, Senator Wayne is waiting in the wings for us. Good morning to you, bro. How you doing? Good. Sorry, man. Traffic was a little, a little crazy. I'm not used to driving out west, so. <laughs> all good. All good. <laughs> it's all good. Thanks for thanks for yeah. making it. Thanks for making so, it. So, a client uh, out west. Uh, been a couple I weeks. Got a client out west. So that's where I, I kind of go off a of share out there when I need stuff. And so I was going like, I'm gonna do the show from here and did it in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> all good. Well, again, we appreciate you. Yeah. We appreciate you. Uh, so, go ahead, buddy. We, so, we're, we're kind of talking a little bit about some of the things that we know we got uh, what seven days left in the legislature. Um, so, uh, we were just talking to Brother McKinney about some of the things that, are, that he's trying to move and things that are happening. Uh, oh, yeah, some big wins this week. Big wins. Right. Yeah. That, right, right. We're talking about the Inland Port Authority, and, and, you know, we're definitely excited about that. Uh, we'll keep a close eye and seeing how that moves forward. Uh, what are your thoughts about you know how that's looking, how that's going, uh, where it is? I right think now. it's real good. Uh, we got another amendment back. Um, uh, I don't, we had a lot of negotiations last week, and so you know McKinney came out on top on everything. And uh, now I'm kind of uh, I don't want to say proud dad moment, but I'm like I ain't even got to go in the room no more. This this guy got it all by <laughs> himself, uh, and it's good though because he's building relationships with the governor's people, people across the aisle, and, and obviously people on our side. But like. People think like we really know what each other be doing, but I'm so as judiciary chair, so busy. Uh, I'm like, hey, what's on this amendment? Because I don't even know what he done put on an amendment. And so he'd be like, oh, this, this, and this. And I'm like, oh, okay, thanks for telling me. Uh, and we keep moving. Okay, okay. So yeah, we're definitely. Ex- I- I'll say I'm excited about seeing you know what this means. And, and again, we we understand that the whole point is to give more control and more community oversight on some of the dollars that are coming in. Um, you've mentioned in the past about, you know, future dollars also, like this not being a one-off situation. Um, what, what does that look like? Once this bill passes, will this be kind of the the pot, if you will, where future funds will go? So uh, LB-164 has uh, two more years of interest funding. So, so that'll, and that'll go to the inland port and around North Omaha. Uh, so there's those should be at least another 30 to well, if the economy stays up, it'll be at least another 40 to 50 million. Uh, conservatively, it's about 20 million. Uh, but, but we think if the economy keeps rocking the way it's going, even if it slows down a little bit over the next two years, it should be probably 50 to 60 million. Uh, and then my bill 1344, we're establishing every two years, uh, Congressional District 1 or Congressional District 2. Uh, can have a tax credit that people can go out and raise money for. So that'll be a, a stream that continues to go forever. Um, and then just uh, here and there, uh, PTSD, we're doing 500,000 uh, this year uh, to start off to keep mm. that off. Uh, I wanted 5 million, but uh, people oversold some things. So uh, we'll do 500,000 mm. each year uh, to start working for North Omaha and our kids on PTSD. Mm. And so does that go toward as far as the PTSD that goes towards like mental yeah, health Yeah, so it'll be a grant that'll be given out um, by DHHS to uh, uh, people from North Omaha who want to provide these services and teach people uh, how to cope with uh, and how, the issues that they're going through. So it's kind of a teach, uh, train the trainer model. Uh, and there's a couple people in the community who have already who have been doing it and have success, and we're trying to boost that up. Uh, and then on the on the back end. Uh, we're also kind of we're tagging along to that is a uh, LV 253, which will be uh, Veterans Court. Uh, this is important because this is the first time that we are uh, not the, well yet the first time that we are taking away the prosecutor's ability to just uh, veto people getting into a problem solving court. 
So uh, we're starting with the veterans, but that, that's a huge thing for us to say that now the judge will get to be able to see everything and decide if this person should get a deferred judgment uh, versus a, a straight sentence. And what a deferred judgment means is uh, if you complete probation successfully, uh, then it's wiped off your record. Mm, okay. Uh, what, what's the, how's that looking? How are you feeling like that's going? So we met again, uh, is that Thursday, Senator? We can think Thursday. Uh, and we got an agreement with the prosecutors and the county attorneys. And, and this is probably one of the, the biggest smart legislations that uh, as far as criminal justice reform uh, that I've ever seen uh, in, in our community. So uh, although it applies to veterans, it sets the model for other 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 things to be applied to. Yeah, that, that was kind of my question beyond veterans. What are some other like problem solving courts is kind of something that I'm not very familiar yeah. so with. So back in the day, we used to call them diversion, but it's not quite, it's oh. a little bit different. And so we have problem solving oh, okay. courts right now in Douglas County, but the prosecutors get to say who gets in and who gets out. And years ago, uh, 2008, 19, I passed what's called deferred, uh, deferred judgment. That's mainly used in Western Nebraska. So what, what I would say is take a, a probation and instead of doing it uh, as a sentence on the back end, we're going to do it as a sentence on the front end. And so if you complete it, then the carrot you get or the win you get when you complete it successfully is you don't have any charges on your record. Mm. So it's a, it's a huge thing for us. Uh, but we're starting with the veterans because there's, there's a special need. We got people right now who have uh, done more tours in Afghanistan and Iraq than, than some of our listeners are alive. And they're coming back home. Mm. Uh, and, and we're dealing with the consequences of uh, not having a support system for those veterans. Wow. Big time. Big time. Yeah. Uh, Ariel's 402 in the chat. He said, for every dollar spent on war, there should be a dollar spent on peace. Man. man hey, uh, so the, the, so we're just been talking about like a lot of money that this, this, this you guys are setting up to come in over time in North and South Omaha in the, kind of the same way that 1024 happened. Uh, but it, it'll be... I am personally turned off by the whole process, and I know that has to do with the DED <laughs> and all the rest of that. Man. So, so I'm wondering if uh, if these dollars, like I'm already like I ain't doing this again. I'm we even have to hire somebody first guy to go after these dollars, or we gonna have to, you know, like going through the process has been that that much of a a, a deal. Uh, will 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 the processes be that extensive and crazy in future years, or is this just the this this just because we went through the DED this time? Uh, what would be the process in, uh, if we didn't do that? What would, what would be the future process on this? It'll be more at the local level, I think. Yeah. Uh, we're not we're we're moving things away from DED at this point every every time we can. So it'll be more at the local and just a, a simpler grant, and, and we don't have to we don't have to reinvent the wheel if we're creating a, a basically a strategic plan for North Omaha. And that's what I try to tell people from the beginning: is this Olson report was just the initial phase of us trying to bring people together in, in North Omaha. They laid out the type of projects we need. If you look at the details of the appendixes, they laid out the needs assessment that we need. So from here, we, we, we got a guide. I mean, we got a guide already. Uh, now it's time to figure out how to implement many of those projects and many of those other things. So I don't, it, you shouldn't have to go through a process like we went through. Wow. Uh, this is kind of off topic, but I wanted to ask Brother McKinney about, uh, we, we've been talking a lot about the inland port. Um, haven't talked a lot about that iHub idea that you, that, that, uh, you were talking about before. Uh, what's, what, is there any, anything going on there, Senator McKinney? Uh, I mean, not a lot that I know of, honestly. I mean, I know there's designated iHubs in Omaha. There's two. I really don't know what they're doing, honestly speaking. Um, but there is a pot of money to develop an iHub in North Omaha that the grant still, to my knowledge, isn't open yet. So that'll be also a pot of funds for somebody with the iHub designation to go out there to try to develop an iHub and serve the community. So, and that'll be overseen by the Inland Port Authority. But I, I'm okay, so that's... With it. That's something you say you have to get designated for before you can apply for the yeah. grant. And how how would anybody again, if anybody's you know listening, they have a an idea center or something that they they're pursuing. How can someone get that designation? Is there an application process, or what does that look like? So so my bill LB thirteen forty four opens it back up. So 
these are one of these things where we talked about it for a year or <laughs> so that three years ago we talked about it we talked about it we set aside 30 million uh and quite honestly our community wasn't ready to go uh, mm. so the application mm. was uh deadline was last year and only two people applied so we're actually going to open it back up um uh, and, and, and not just our community when i say our community but also you know western nebraska had no uh, application so uh, there was a push to open it back up and so we opened it back i'm opening it back up with 1344 um and, and putting some funding around it um but yeah the, the reality was is we had a lot of community meetings we talked about a business center so that was a big thing for senator mckinney uh, he opened it up we opened it up applications for over six months and nobody really applied mm. so we're gonna do mm. it again there's an opportunity there for the uh, people to kind of get together and do some research now and, and uh, you know, team up and do some things so that when this comes open again, it can get done. So uh, that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that kind of there's an opportunity here. So it, you know, it's, you know, it's still there. It's still an opportunity for us if we can get it together. So appreciate appreciate you knowing about that. Have you have you heard any more interest in, in the iHub? Like, has anyone else uh, since then approached you about, you know, starting one or getting the designation? Um, no, uh, what, what we're putting in the law is we're focusing more on an innovation district. Um, at least that's, so it'd be, it's larger than the IHUB. And part of it is, mm. is that we're, since we passed this bill, looking at other communities, the success like uh, Cambridge and, and Atlanta, and, uh, and this really comes from Atlanta too, where they're sitting there saying, yeah, we have a nice building and nice programming, but if we're going to make this work, there has to be support systems for these small businesses in the community too. So the innovation district is where everybody's kind of moving towards, and that's where we're, we're, we're moving towards too. Okay. Sounds good. I'm actually pretty excited about that. I'm looking forward to seeing, seeing how yeah. that works out. Being a part yeah, of it. yeah, yeah. I feel like this can be uh, transformational. And, and you know, my kind of final question on the whole district and, and in the Port Authority again, to my understanding, is 300 acres that this will cover. Can you kind of lay out the boundary lines? Like, how how big of a space is that really? You, can't, you know, it's kind of hard so to So the, we're talking the inland port. So the inland yes. port uh, basically is 16th Street East. Uh, I think uh, it starts at Lake. The city council has the map, but it's pretty much 16th Street East, and it's, or maybe 18th Street East, and it starts, I think, at Lake Street. Um, so pretty much the airport part area is what we're, we're talking about. Okay. And, and the innovation district would be in that. Correct. That. And then uh, I think they also drew it up, and I got to double check, but they also drew it up by Ames, where uh, right on 30th and Ames, where we, we've seen their corner sit there for since I was little, uh, try to help us mm-hmm. in development there. Uh, and then along at Ames Street, where the old Logiers and those open areas are for uh, light manufacturing, try to develop that too. Yeah. Okay. So I was wondering. Cool. Uh, we, we, if you guys are just joining us, we're, we're sitting here with brother, uh, brother senators Terrell McKinney and Justin Wayne. They come uh, and give us fill in on what's going on weekly. We got seven days left in the session, so uh, they, they got they got some long days and nights ahead. Uh, if you have any questions, they're here. For, maybe here for a couple more minutes. Might might hurry up and get those questions in if you would. I want to jump in the chat real quick and just uh, 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 re- reflect the sentiment that I feel. Mama God is saying, "Hate to see your time winding down, Senator Wayne." We will most def miss the lock and step between you and Senator McKinney, uh, for sure. Any any uh, progress on 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 this on uh, anybody who you who you're backing yet for this? Uh, we know we talked to, talked to a couple people already about people going to take your place. Uh, have yeah, you so I, I've, I've been talking to Ashley. Uh, uh, I, I like her mindset on it, so um, kind of waiting to see where the primary falls out at, and whoever I can help, or who I think aligns best with my district. Uh, the best thing for me right now is, is uh, like when I say Senator McKinney, and I don't always know, like Senator McKinney amended a bill, his uh, tribal ID bill on the floor. And like that takes like, just being able to pull it off in the, in the minutes that you got to pull it off and get enough votes and get the support and to make it crazy is I wasn't even there that night. I, I was at my daughter's uh, AAU or uh, all-star game. And so I call he I call him on the way and like hey how'd it go today he's like oh man I amended this on the bill I was like oh okay you just uh so it's it's cool to kind of see how uh, I feel like I know my time is coming to an end but I think we're in good hands yeah so, sure. mm-hmm. and just watching that like I didn't even really know he was going to do it. it he kind of threw it out there like man I, it's kind of the same Jermaine so I'm gonna see if I can get this done 
And then after my daughter's game, I called him and was just like, he's like, yeah, we got it done. I was like, cool. And so people calling me, what's, what's McKinney trying to do? I, I don't know. I, 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 like <laughs> we talk, but we don't talk about everything. And he's got his set of bills and that's an easy bill that, that basically says that, I mean, you can say, McKinney, I ain't got to explain your bill, but he, he did right, it. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's how we got to keep doing it. That's what's yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just just quickly, uh, Senator McKinney, you know, again, you're kind of the, you know, new new guy on the block as far as the, the you know, the Senate goes. Do you feel like you're, you know, finally getting into a swing of just operational wisdom and just knowing how to navigate, you know, these shark infested waters, if you will? Um, I think I'm. You, you learn more every day. You know, it's always something new that happens. And then there's sometimes the stuff that happens that you are surprised of. But I think I learn mm-hmm. different things every day. Like I like to sit around and listen to other people, how they operate in the legislature to kind of see what they doing and just studying everybody there and just trying to figure out my way. But I think I, I don't think I know it. Like, I think it's impossible to fully understand the legislature and all the context and nuances of everything, because I'm not on every committee. I don't know every subject mm-hmm. matter. So you got to listen to everybody and try to best uh, votes as possible but i think i'm still learning I, I, don't, I don't think i ever i will ever stop learning though brother brother right, kenny right. that the coach sitting on the side is watching them watching them guys moves and say okay i see senator so-and-so favor that left arm so let me let me get in there and <laughs> throw those moves down so that's that's what's up man i really really appreciate uh uh the work that you're doing in there I, and i've seen it too over the course of time you guys have been on here and i, I definitely see uh, more wisdom, more confidence, and in, uh, in everything else, and look forward to you running again, which you are. How's how's the run going right now? Uh, you you picking up some speed there? Yeah, it's been good so far. You know, I've been getting a lot of support. You know, everybody I've ran into from young to old is, you know, supporting me. So I, I feel good about it. You know, I've been going around dropping yard signs off and and, and that type of stuff. So it'll be some more okay. stuff coming up this month, but. I feel good about it so far. So for anyone who wants to get any yard signs, how can they get, you know, get that material? Uh, they can email me. That's probably the best way. I'll put the email in the chat, but that's probably the best way. And okay. then we get it dropped off. There you go. Let's start seeing some signs pop up around the city. Let's get this thing going. Um, I guess we are winding down on time, so I didn't want to look forward uh, again. What what is coming up in these last hours? Uh, some big fights, uh, Senator Wayne. <laughs> hey, right, look, he got, he got, uh, right, he, right, he got right, his right. battle battle face on already. Man, how much time you got? You on mute? You muted? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, everything's go. up. We got property tax relief. We got income tax relief. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to get my uh, no sales tax on utilities. I think we can't tax uh, essentials like uh, utilities. Uh, a couple of years ago, I got no tax on on water, uh, residential water. Mm. So you know, you should, people should be paying tax on their on their lights and natural gas to heat their homes and their apartments. So uh, this is a lot going on, and uh, it's all about at this point the floor. Everything's on the floor, and it's how you get things in and how you. Uh, one bill that I'm looking at doing is uh, LB341, which is from Senator Halloran, but um, it, it it makes it removes the protection for government agencies uh, for sexual assault of a child. Right now, if a mm. DHHS worker or, or a cop uh, rapes a child, uh, you can't sue the state. And so, hey, what? yeah, yeah that, that was about four years ago. Um, and so it was when the Supreme mm. Court said that, and we have never been able to fix that. But I think with this legislature, we are uh, we have an opportunity on the floor to do so. So, yeah, it's going to be some long days, but we just trying to figure out how to get some some good legislation passed and stop bad legislation. And you said Holleran is on that. Holleran is the one who wrote the bill. Uh, it's been in my committee for four years, uh, and so I couldn't even get out of committee uh, until I had enough Republicans on the floor hear that it was um, stuck in my committee, and they started leaning on other Republicans saying. This, this don't make sense. Uh, but it still, it only came out of my committee, uh, five, three. Uh, so, you know, uh, and, and, the, and the Republicans argue, and I, I mean, I don't want to say Republicans, but yeah, it's all Republicans. Republicans argue against the bill saying it's going to cost school districts and states tons of money. And my argument back is 
if, if we got that big of a problem, we're doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. That's but, they worried about the money, they, not the kid. Yeah, make sure that child is 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 made whole. They got to live with those things for the rest of their lives. So, you know, we, we should figure that out. Uh, so it's it's an interesting debate, and uh, it'll be interesting to see where people fall on that issue. Man, yeah, that's that's definitely one to look out for. Yeah. Uh, one last question there for two is saying, uh, can we get free internet and drug free zones? I think more money is spent restricting internet to the school's property than to, than to let it go to it to for free. That's interesting. So uh, that's one of the committees that Senator McKinney and I ain't on. Or, uh, we're not we're not on a telecommunication committee. But what I will tell you is uh, PSC is an elected board. Uh, they oversee pretty much the telecom industry. And there is some we, we provide a grant. Uh, out now, yeah, we did uh, to Omaha, and Cox Cable came in and blocked that grant, saying that there was already uh, oversaturation in the market. And literally, just um, two weeks ago, I showed the governor's office. I pulled up my address, and I was like, "Here go all the internet providers, and the only one I can get is, is Cox or CenturyLink. So there's nothing else I can get." So, he, and, the, and the governor's office just couldn't believe that Omaha, you can only get you know basically two providers. Um, so it's a conversation, but, um, I think every year I bring a bill to let cities have their own, um, internet, uh, in Tennessee, they pass a law doing that. And actually they, they have some of the best internet services in the country and speeds. Um, so I look at internet as a utility that is no different than anything else. Um, uh, yeah. but the PSC is an important board that, um, we need to pay attention to when we talk about elections. There you go, Mr. Sanchez. Go see if you can get on that get on that committee and see what's happening on that. Appreciate you guys, man. Any last words for let you guys uh, let you guys get out of here? Um, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, let's have a good week. You know, uh, I was up all night actually with my family at the hospital with my oh, grandpa. Man. So, oh, man. I'm sorry to hear that. better health for him. So that's what I'm thinking about, Definitely. but. Just everybody have a good week and you know try to enjoy the day. Appreciate you, man. Uh, prayers out to you, to your family, your grandfather. Hope it gets better. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's simple. I think you know not to get religious because not everybody has the same religious beliefs. But if you look at all the major religions, it's around this time that it's a reset. Whether it's Christianity, Judaism, uh, Muslim, it's it's a reset. It's a it's a sacred period where uh, we we start something new. And so, you know, look at today as the as the first day of the rest of your life, and, and let's try to figure out how to how to grow and change for this next year and, and do better. That's what I'm, see. This is what I'm talking about. It's the first. It's a Monday. It's it, we're ready to go. It's it's like it feels like the first of the year right now. So I, I feel exactly what you're saying. Yeah, man. Yeah, I've been feeling that. I've been feeling. I don't know if I was. I was. Put, I was putting it on like it's the first of the month and it's a Monday. That's why I'm feeling like this. But no, it's also the beginning of spring. Things, things is mm-hmm. things is popping. I appreciate appreciate that uh that word of advice there, man. That, that makes a lot of sense to me. So appreciate that. Yeah, I apologize for the tardiness, and uh, y'all have a wonderful uh, weekend, McKinney. If you need anything, you know, just let me know. Well, all right, y'all. All right, brother. There you go, right. man. Peace Take and love, easy, man. Peace. All right, well, there you go. Some good words from the senators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was nice. I, I kind of feel the same, man. And, you know, I, I, I've been, you know, open about my, my fast in the middle of Ramadan. So I'm kind of feeling like I'm getting a re, reset of my gut, and, you know, detoxing some things, trying to make better eating decisions. Yeah. Um, And, yeah, it's spring, you know, new life springing forth. I'm yeah. getting the redux of my mind right now. I think um, that, that I was doing way too much uh, with two full-time jobs in a, in a side hustle is what I felt like I was working this past three years. So, uh, so now that I'm, I've stepped away from the, from the Benson Theater, uh, I'm having a reset of the mind right now on, on what what's what's my priorities, uh, my creative mind coming back. A lot of things are resetting as far as that. Uh, my it feels like a new lifestyle is on the horizon for me right now. So, uh, so that's what's going on with me. Let us let us know what's going on with y'all, Chad Chimers, Ghost listeners, anybody who is uh, feeling a reset happening right now. I think that's a that's the you know that's that's great. That's that's uh. Right along with this season, love, love supreme. I feel like that's a very uh, a strong a strong part of love is is uh, reinvention and and uh, reexamination and and uh, uh, a kind of a, a re reintroduction of yourself. Mm-hmm. 
reinvigorated. Yeah. So allow us to reintroduce ourselves. We first sky Omaha. <laughs> We're going to a break. Hey. It's going down. You're listening to first sky Omaha in the morning. In the morning. All be buddy to God. All of you, Chad Chambers, Ghost Interest. Thanks for hanging with us this late in the game. We got a couple more stories to go and some haps at the end. Get your haps together. We'll be right back. Stay tuned, y'all. The first Sky Omaha Radio, first Sky Omaha in the morning. In the morning, be, buddy to God, how are y'all doing? Hey, that's what's up, man. I'll get kid. Hey, yo, yep, that's me on. That's the first time you heard this. I'll get kid in the track. I'll get kid in the, in the on, chat. Man. That's what's up, man. Yeah, yeah, he said, let me put some gigs together and get this money. <laughs> hey, yeah, let's get it, man. You, I'll, I'll be in. Uh, I'll be in Omaha this summer, man. Let's yeah, link. we definitely got to link up, man. Fam, he says uh, he gives us a good morning a little earlier. So happy belated Easter and or Trans Visibility Day. Okay. Shout okay. out. Shout out. There you go. Uh, yeah. yeah. You go. Also, it, it, Ariel, let me see. Uh, also, uh, Black Dynamite in the chat says, and one of those providers unnecessarily expensive, and the other one doesn't have great service. I think you. I yeah. think Cox is the expensive one, and CenturyLink is the one that doesn't have great service. That's what. I'm, that's my guess. <laughs> Man. Um. Yeah. It's 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 bad. It's bad. I remember. I don't know if anyone else had uh familiar with HughesNet. It's like a dish internet oh, service. Man, don't mess with them, y'all. I, they had me climbing on the roof myself to oh. take the dish down. And, oh yeah, it was it was it was bad, man. I, I don't mess with heights either, man. I, I'll be honest, man. Me and heights are not cool, not cool at all, man. Knees was buckling. I had had the little kids next door looking at me like he on the roof. I'm like get 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 back, get out of here. Get you stop looking here. at me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. That, 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 I, I like what brother brother Wayne is saying. Uh, Senator Wayne saying that 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 uh, you know, internet is a utility. It really is a utility now. Yeah, just like just like not the heat, day. just like the water, uh, it's necessary. There's not there's things that you absolutely have to do on the internet now. I remember a time when it was an option to do a thing on the internet. You still can go down, fill out a piece of paper, yeah. do something. Now some things are actually uh, uh, you cannot do them without the internet, uh, including some work. So, you know, is what it is on that. So, man, or or just paying the bills, man. Like it's, you know, it's a hassle trying to get down to these buildings and, you know, pay these bills nowadays. Like definitely uh getting online, you know. Like, well, like I there. said, there's some bills I got that can only pay online. There's a there's a lot of stuff that's happening only online now. They've taken away the ability go. to do it. So, uh that's what's up. But he said, "Buddy, you do but he said do it expeditiously in my joke. <laughs> I was I, I was trying to get up and get down as fast as I could, uh, but yeah, I don't I don't mess with that. Yeah, you know, and it was on a slope roof, like it was it was scary. It was scary. I'll be honest. Just don't do HughesNet. Whatever you do, you, you you're looking for internet in your area. Don't there do HughesNet. <laughs> um, but that actually reminds me of a story that we've been uh, meaning to talk to uh, talk about the last uh, couple of days. Uh, talking about the STEM, yes. uh, which is something that that we're all about. We've been pushing, uh, but apparently. Uh, that might not be the thing anymore. Uh, again, we've been uh, trying to get our youth, especially in North Omaha, into STEM, into coding. Uh, again, a lot of jobs, you know, were being provided. Uh, a lot of opportunities coming out of getting knowledge in coding. Uh, but there is actually a, a um, article uh, coming out of Bloomberg. Uh, apparently, a Nobel Peace, a Nobel Prize winner, is cautioning on the rush into STEM after the rise of AI. And saying that actually um, that might not be the way to go. Again, a Nobel Prize winning labor market economist 
has cautioned younger generations against piling into studying science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, aka STEM, uh, throw arts in there and become STEAM, uh, saying that empathetic and creative skills may thrive in a world dominated by artificial intelligence. Uh, apparently, uh, English is kind of the big thing as, uh, again, more and more people learn about prompting and asking the AI certain questions to get certain results. Uh, again, the economist Christopher Pissarat uh, Pissaritis, a uh, uh, professor of economics at the London School of Economics, uh, said that the workers in certain IT jobs risk sowing their own seeds of self-destruction by advancing AI. And this is something that uh, even in our own content creators camp, uh, we're looking to implement and looking to introduce to the community and get more into and even using it uh, in our business uh, day to day as far as AI. Uh, and I kind of want to present the question, uh, how many of the chat chimers have gotten into AI how many of you are, are studying AI, um, using AI at any capacity, whether personal or business? And, and um, yeah, what are your thoughts on, on that? Are we excited about that? Yeah, we have definitely jumped into the AI world uh, on a lot of the stuff that, that we're trying to do here. And also, uh, even on some of the uh, the curriculum that's coming up this year, we, we're trying to still do another chat, uh, another uh, content creators uh, camp mm -hmm. and and we're realizing that that uh, AI can be really used for that the the process of turning your content creation into actual news articles, uh, being able to run your own news desk uh, using AI. Uh, it definitely has has peeled back some of the some of the things, even just the Chat GPT uh, as as an editor. Man. You know, you you can uh, put put what you wrote in there and tell it to clean up the language and. And, uh, and and you you're sounding pro real professional with whatever comes out of that. So even on just that level, uh, there's there's ways to use AI now in, in, in anything that has to do with information and arts. And we're definitely digging in and been been we've been on this for for a little while now because we got to figure out how to be able to use it for what it is we trying to do here. It's news gang right. stuff. So uh, that's what's up. Sean McCarthy in the chat says I work in speech recognition, Alexa, Google Assist, and AI is becoming a huge part of my job. So yeah, Man. brother McCarthy okay. is a writer journalist uh so yeah we need to we need we should talk because we're, we're definitely trying to um you know have these kind of conversations to figure out how it works in the in the world of journalism and content creation how we can utilize that to get more information out and really get things together here for our community there's an opportunity here uh this article is really interesting to me because how much of a push we've been doing on stem how much of a push we've been doing on yeah. coding several coding successful coding schools coding for girls, all kinds of things that we've been uh, talking about and talking to people about over the course of some years. And now AI can code for you if you give it the right prompts. So, yeah. so where the, what's going to happen with those jobs? Man. And, and we take in consideration um, reading levels. Uh, again, we talked about, you know, dipping reading levels, especially in North Omaha, OPS schools. And, you know, again, as it gets away from the more tech, you know, computer engineering side of it, and, and more to, you know, AI doing all that. And really, you just got to be good at English. You, like you just have to be able to formulate thoughts and formulate a prompt uh, to get the AI to do what it is that you want to do. Uh, so, you know, that adds a whole new element and a whole new light on the importance of uh, reading and, and getting reading comprehension, getting reading levels up in our communities. If you can read, if you can formulate a sentence, then you, you might can, you know, unlock some keys to the world. Uh, I see a uh, pops in the chat saying I use AI thousand times a day on every level. Uh, so you can definitely see, you know, how powerful it is. Actually, it's funny, Paul, you're kind of talking about the content creators camp and us implementing AI into the teaching of it. I'll be honest, man, I'll be candid. I use AI to make those PowerPoints. Anybody, <laughs> anybody that went to the content creators camp, those were AI PowerPoints, man. It, it's, 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 it's huge. It can definitely uh, elevate your game, yeah. if you will. You get out of it what you put in it. And uh, there's a lot of you classes know. and courses out there right now on on how to uh, get your prompts ready, get your prompts together, uh, which is the way that you say a thing to the AI in order to produce a certain thing. But I think that's going to become obsolete at some point because AI yeah. is growing. AI is is heading in the direction of being able to, to, to understand and comprehend regular everyday speech. And so it's going to get smarter and it's going to understand things without having without having to uh, decipher or you have to right now. It feels a little bit like you got to learn a code, a kind of code way of speaking as far as prompts are concerned in order to get something happening. But that's going to go away uh, right now. You have to be a little bit more specific than you're going to have to be in the future even. So really, it's going to come down to your idea, your work. You're going to use it as a tool and it's just inevitable. 
Augie Kid in the chat says, I've been tracking the tech world partly through what one of my Facebook friends has been uh, going through. He joined the military to get a jump start into college and tech jobs. Uh, tech job, but in those tech jobs are going away. I really feel like they're going away. So that's that's going to be a, pr- a problem. Sean McCarthy says that definitely feels like AI is both a tool and a destroyer. Uh, much yeah. the much like how the internet both helped how news is circulated and how it's destroyed newspaper. That's that's a great analogy. Yeah. It is. Yeah, that's great. That's exactly what it feels like to me too. Like it's going to be a great tool. Uh, every every tool that you that, that has been happening since the information age started has been a democratization tool for as far as I'm concerned. So it makes it so that we can do something like this. This is essentially a broadcast like on TV right now because of tech. Uh, I think AI is going to do is going to even take that even further. Um, Kimra Snipe says I use Chat GPT sometimes. Yep. Uh, Ariel's four hundred two says I've been faking my intelligence since day one. Artificial intelligence. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> my- Aggie Kiss is uh, based on what he's seen, talking about his friend, a lot of the tech world is imploding. He's worried about mm. the future of his career because he doesn't want to keep working for the military. Man. There you go. He says uh, the gold rush of it all has seemingly reached its peak. I don't, I don't think it's reached its peak yet. It just starting from what I'm seeing. I don't I'm think seeing. it's reached its peak yet. I think it's going to be amazing. The next thing is probably going to be full-blown robotics. Yep, it's already happening. It's that. already happening. I'm yep. Gwen Easter gives a good morning, and I'm glad you came in on this conversation right here because one thing AI can't do, watch your kids. So shout out there to the go. Gwen Easters of the world, who, uh, and her in particular, who is, uh, is caring about these babies and puts together facilities and things in order to take care of those kids. Uh, so there's always going to be some live alive with one another stuff that's happening that is just not going to be, uh, be able to be taken care of by any, anything digital. No, hopefully, hopefully they don't got robots taking care of the babies. Well, some, future. some, some demographics gonna have robots taking care of the kids. <laughs> I'm saying us, probably not. Okay, probably okay, not. okay. I, I'm picking, picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> some, I think some oh, already man. have some doing that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Ro- Robo nanny. He said, "You must have never seen Smart House." <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> classic Disney film. Classic, classic. Yeah, man. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's it's interesting. So what, where do you go from here? If you're if you're if you have a right, kid right. or you're a young person and you uh and you want to send them down the direction of being able to have a pay a job that's going to sustain them, uh, where do you put them? Coding coding school don't seem yeah. like the thing anymore. To the chagrin of my friends that own coding schools. Man, right, 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 right. Uh, shout out to uh, Sister Gamble, and you know, um, who's teaching our young young sisters to to code. Um, but also, you know, I'm thinking we we talked about the library card earlier. It might be a good time to get your library card. You know, hop on a computer if you don't have one at home, and uh, get to get to you know digging into some of these AI sites and things like that because there's actually more and more positions popping up on like uh, Upwork and, and you know those type of um, freelancer type websites, uh, Fiverr. Uh, actually, a lot of people are, you know, actually, I've seen on Fiverr specifically, AI prompt writers are like the top job. Uh, so even right now at this very moment, if you're looking for a side gig, if you're looking to get, you know, some extra coins, AI might be it, man. Like Look I said, into that, it. that prompt into thing it. is going to only last a little while, I think. Hey, we'll get while the getting is good. <laughs> I'm off the table right now. Yeah, Tony man, Johnson's yeah. asking, any jobs in North Omaha centered around AI or coding? Not sure. Yeah, I don't. I haven't heard any. Not sure, but yeah, not sure. Yeah, yeah. Interesting stuff, man. Well, yeah, yeah. We're all about the tech, though. We're all about yeah. The we, tech, gotta be, so. we gotta be. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Looking into it, uh, but just about uh, seven minutes left in this thing, man. You want to jump into a lightning round? Uh, you got some haps? Yeah, What's let's the do word? a lightning round for sure. All right, all right. Again, big shout out to the senators for uh, stepping through. Uh, we did not get into one of the victories that Senator McKinney had uh, over the past week. Uh, but definitely want to let the people know about what's going on with that. Again, as Channel 3 uh, reports, uh, again, on Thursday, the Nebraska legislature passed a bill to recognize every May 19th as the day Malcolm X was born. Of course, there's already been celebrations and activities and festivities in the North Omaha community. Uh, but now as a state, big shout out to Senator Terrell McKinney for pushing this forward. Uh, again, Malcolm Little was born right here in Omaha and the bill introduced by uh, Senator McKinney and also Daniel Conrad uh, still does not declare the day as a state holiday, 
mainly because of the money it will cost to pay uh, people for the day off. Uh, but it does allow for Nebraska schools to recognize Malcolm X as a civil rights activist, which is very interesting, as we've seen with a lot of book bannings and uh, changes in curriculum and education. Uh, this is huge to get Brother um, brother Malcolm uh, recognized uh, in a statement from the Malcolm X Memorial Foundation. Uh, they say this day of recognition uh, is also aligned with honoring Malcolm X as a 2024 inductee with the Nebraska Hall of Fame. And as the, Nebraska, the Malcolm X Memorial Foundation continues to build and grow into the future, we are grateful uh, to Nebraska senators and the citizens of Nebraska for making May 19th Malcolm X Day. So big, big shout out uh, to Brother Malcolm X, the legacy that he left. And also uh, Senator Terrell McKinney uh, for pushing that legacy forward and getting that legacy officially recognized. So that's huge. That's huge. There was a reason um, to figure out the reason why something. there wasn't going to be a it wasn't going to be a holiday that people could actually have the day off. Um, and I forgot. Yeah, it was something about some money situations. I still don't feel like I got a complete answer on that. But hey, I guess this is a, it's a good step. Mm-hmm. Maybe they'll maybe they'll move it into the next realm later. Maybe, maybe it's a, it's a step in the right direction. I'll say that. Yeah. I'll say that. Uh, in other news, though, speaking of steps in the right direction, uh, apparently, uh, again, uh, according to this article from Channel 3 as well, uh, black businesses as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic plunged at 41 percent nationwide. Uh, but it seems like there's uh, some excuse, uh, again, formerly a very, very vibrant uh, business corridor in North Omaha. And according to this article, uh, there's a lot of excitement from business owners uh, like Miss Imani Murray, who owns Idle Vital Living, or uh, Brother LaFleur, who owns, of course, LaFleur's Fashions. Uh, apparently, North Omaha has been, or the North 24th Street has been uh, designated as a business district, uh, which is actually see a question uh, that has been swirling a historic district will it be a district will it be a business district and apparently business is where it's going of course we're seeing some uh, businesses pop up especially in like the fairdale village uh and, and hopefully that will continue with the hundreds of millions of dollars pouring into north omaha uh, again a lot of excitement uh what are some things that you will all on north 24 for are you happy about this being designated as a business district, I think this is something that should be more of a historical district. Uh, what say you? So, uh, again, uh, a very brief uh, article on that. But apparently there are some movements going down on the deuce uh, and a lot of things to be excited about. Uh, so let's make sure we're supporting, supporting, supporting and uh, patronizing these businesses. Yeah, um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I think uh, no, 1802, Shawnee, Shawnee's Place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. one of the it's, newest it's open. Just- so if you popping up, we'd like to see what's going to happen with Skeets, the old Skeets building. Can we get some more barbecue on the deuce? We'll see. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I, I don't know of many businesses that have been starting up uh, quite quite uh, so recently. But, yeah, I, as far as the business district is concerned, I, I'd like to know what that means exactly. And, and I'm going to try to look, look into that and we can talk about it a little further on another day. But. Uh, does that mean that there's some opportunities there? There means some there's some money involved that 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 would help uh, uh, turn that bit, bit, that district more into a business district. If you've always been able to to get yourself rent yourself a space somewhere around there to do something, what does this mean? What is this going to mean that it's a business district now? I did think, oh yeah, there you go, Dollhouse Fashions. So I appreciate you re- reminding me about that one. Uh, a couple of new businesses there. Of course, we know uh, 957 The Boss is on that street. Uh, you know, there's there's a few things happening there, of course, but what does it mean? I thought that they were going to go after it being a historical district because of the fact there's so many nonprofit organizations on on uh, on the deuce and and uh, and museums that are opening up. Uh, you know, uh, the, the Omaha Star is going to be a museum. Uh, you know, we have the the Black History Museum there on the block. Kathy Tyree uh, uh, Theater. Kathy Tyree Theater. You know, so they're you know so. Uh, so I was looking forward to that because I, I read enough to know that there would be some money involved and some things that would help it be a historic historical district. But what does it mean for it to be a business district? I would like to know and see what mm. that is. And, and on that note, Cameron's coming with a good idea. Uh, she says, but I agree. We do need a black chamber of commerce. Mm. Mm. It's okay. interesting. It's interesting. Uh, but speaking of chambers of commerce and business support uh, and other news coming out of the uh, Nebraska Examiner, apparently there's a Nebraska Business Development Center uh, out of UNO. And I'm kind of curious, is anybody uh, is anybody familiar with this? Has anybody had any assistance from this center? Uh, apparently, uh, according to this article, the Nebraska Business Development Center 
uh, has served more than 2,000 cli uh, clients and facilitated more than $23 million in business investment and also helped businesses lend nearly $300 million in government contracts. How many of those businesses coming out of North Omaha or East Omaha, uh, mind you? Again, there is one uh, business that is being highlighted in this article. Uh, apparently, uh, Miss Gloria Patricia Avalos. Uh, got into child care business in 2016. And since then, uh, the MBDC has helped assemble a business plan, helped her secure finances. And she has now several locations uh, of her child care facility, uh, even uh, opening an around the clock facility uh, on the uh, former St. Rose Catholic Church uh, location. That's 4110 South 13th Street. And again, this will be around the clock for second and third shift workers uh, to have their children taken care of while they're at work. Again, very, very curious to, to see these numbers. Again, 2,000 clients, millions and millions of dollars secured for these businesses. Uh, Governor Jim Pillen and Casey Billets, uh, again, director of the DED, uh, hosted the award announcements uh, to recognize some of the businesses helped by this center. Uh, but again, anybody in our community familiar with this uh, center, anybody in our community have access? Has anybody tried to get access uh, to this center? Uh, is there any more information? Do we know about this? Is there you know open access for all uh, with this. Again, the Nebraska Business Development Center would definitely love to hear chats on that. Yep. You asked all the questions I had. So there, there you go. go. There you go. And uh, that pretty much does it for our lightning round. That's what's up. Appreciate that. Uh, Tamika Renee in the chat. Good morning. Says NBDC has been around a couple of decades. Uh, they helped me with getting local government contracts with our cleaning business back in 2006. Okay. There you go. Love it. Okay, so that's what we want to hear about. You know, some people that got some actual experience there. Appreciate yeah, that very yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, Sherman Wells says uh, we need businesses now, uh, not nonprofits. We need businesses, not nonprofits. Black dollars. He says black business is a historical district, is a historical in a historical district. It will always be a historical district because you can't erase North Omaha history on the deuce. There you go. So you sure of that, but is, if it's designated a, dis, a, a historical district by the city, then that means that there's, you get certain privileges and certain things. That's that's mm -hmm. what I'm I'm trying to find out what those things are as a business district. Uh, Anthony Rogers, right in the chat. Good morning. Says uh, we we may not necessarily want a black chamber of commerce. The Atlanta Black Chamber is a horrible entity that has harmed black folk more than helped. Mm. Okay, so something to consider. He says we need a working class chamber of commerce more than a racialized one. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Uh, um, there is, if I'm not mistaken, the African Chamber of Commerce. Is that that's a thing? Yep. We, we yeah, we've had some people on the show on that, uh, and and you know, still still wanting to know about how these things work. One thing that that happened when we interviewed uh, the 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 Chad Chimer, who was with Nebraska for us the mm -hmm. other day, we were just talking about that meeting. Mm -hmm. Is uh, something was hit me at that time that um, this this could be a great use of this platform to be able to bring folks on and and have them break down what their nonprofit does how they're funded and so on and so forth. They really kind of start keeping a little bit of a log of like, what, what are some of these entities doing? Uh, not just nonprofits, but the city, the city entities, the chamber of commerce, the African chamber of commerce, everybody, if we can get a, a, a idea of what everybody's doing, then maybe we can help better with trying to connect things. Mm -hmm. um, but the first, the first thing is like, I was just hitting me like how much you don't know about certain entities. We went through this when we had our brother Barney on uh, and we've learned more about the empowerment network this year. Than, than we did last year in our in the way that we speak about it is way differently the way, where we see we things can get plugged in is different now you know mm -hmm. so I, i'm seeing i'm seeing that i'm seeing that that uh, there's a lack in the way that people are describing what it is that is going on with their nonprofit entities what their goals and in in a uh, mission is and also where you know the transparency where they're getting funded and so on and so forth kind of kind of important things to know uh not just to call people out but to try to plug people in you know um, so anyway, that's, that's kind of like, uh, the, kind of my thought on that is, uh, we just kind of inadvertently have been having conversations with people that have these, these organizations and groups and things that are here to supposed to be helping us out here in North Omaha, some kind of way. And, uh, and it's, it would be good to, to learn more about it. This one right here where Tamika Renee just explained that she's, she's, uh, benefited from this one that you just said. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that, that enlightened, that, that's, that's some great enlightenment. Now we know a person that we can ask, you know, what, did, what did this program do? And what's the it's, process? It's, what's the process, and what and what and how do they enhance what's going on in 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 with your business? You know, so right, right. right. Again, we're talking about businesses. There's resources out there, but how many of us know them? How many of us have access to them? How many of us uh, even feel you know welcome <laughs> to to take advantage of these things? 
Uh, a lot of times we find our communities out on the fringes, but we're here to change that. Most deaf. Appreciate everybody's comments today. Uh, I didn't get to all of them, but I thank you uh, very much for checking them out. If you missed any parts of this show, please check it out in its entirety in on Facebook and YouTube and check out all the chats on both plat- platforms. Lots of really great information and questions that we can uh, handle and tackle on other days and, uh, and, uh, and just, you know, everything that's been said today and all the questions to the senators really appreciate everybody's participation today yeah, in man. a big way. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, uh, uh, anything you want to leave them with buddy or. Yeah. Or- well, uh, just kind of a quick question and then uh, we'll get about it here. I see our sister Tamika Renee, I uh, saying, can we mention that Nebraskans for us is a 501 C4? And uh, if you can even, you know, just kind of break down in the chat what that means. Like, why is that significant? Uh, why mention that? Um, yeah, that's that's something that we'll have to get into another day. When we when we asked the, uh, the sister that came on, uh, they she said that 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 uh, Nebraska for us is a 501 C3 and a 501 C4. Mm-hmm. I know that some of the rules of the 501 C4 is that you don't have to always uh just dis- disclose what's going on as far as the funding and so on so on mm. and so forth maybe what they're leaning on not mm. sure but that's something i'd like to definitely tackle another time yeah so uh yeah let us know what the your your uh the premise of your comment means there on that one so appreciate that very much also yeah. Gwyneth says a black chamber would be good as long as you have the right black people operating it and want to want to help black people who's that <laughs> who's the yeah. right black people right, right this is right, kind, right. Of the, the, kind of the the overall question yeah and on that note we got to bring back up you know what's going on with the african-american commission like you know mm-hmm. the, yeah, what's what's going on with that what do we you know what's what's being done there uh but those are all as paul said questions and answers we'll have to get to at a later date it's about five minutes past the hour and uh it's about that time to get up out of here right on you got some words for the people yeah, big shout out, of course, to all of our guests, Brother Sherman Wells, uh, the Senators, Brother Terrell McKinney and Justin Wayne for taking time out of their busy schedules to come and speak with us and drop some things on our brains, some food for thought. So we appreciate that. And of course, as always, appreciate all of you, the listeners, ghost listeners, first time listeners, last time listeners, chat chimers, everybody who tuned in. We appreciate you. We love you. We thank you. Say it all the time because we mean it. The show would not be the show without you. Uh, so hopefully we will continue to get your support. So catch the same time, same place, Monday, Wednesday and Friday right here on First Guy Omaha in the morning. And also be sure to check us out on TikTok and YouTube for your news updates. And in, in the meantime, between time, Paul B. Yo, yo. Get away, man. Man, thanks to, uh, speaking of support, thanks to everybody that is supporting us, uh, all the ones that are members, $10 people, $25 people, $50 people. Thank you very much. If you are so inclined to help us continue what we're doing here, please uh, join us and become a reoccurring member and sponsor of this channel. Uh, go to firstskyomaha.com and hit the donate button and please become one of those uh, members as well. Also, shout out to uh, Drunk Ship Coffee that's a sponsor of our hey. show. Yep, yep. Get your Drunk Ship Coffee on. Go to drunkshipcoffee.com and uh, order your bean, order your bags of beans. It's the family uh, coffee coffee company, and they've been sourcing beans from a farm in Ethiopia where coffee was invented, There you go. as a matter of fact. So... Uh, yeah, so get ready for that. We uh, we will be working on a giveaway this week on that. Uh, shout out to Drunk Ship Coffee for sponsoring that giveaway as well. And uh, anybody else who wants to do that as well, sponsor sponsor the show or sponsor our news briefs on TikTok, uh, hit us up on firstskyomaha at gmail.com. Just uh, send a request over there and we'll have somebody uh, give you a call and talk about all those things. There you and, go. Uh, so we can continue on doing what we got to do here. Got to pay the bills around here as well. It is the first time to pay the bills. And uh, that's what it is, man. Sometimes the first don't mean nothing but time to pay the rent. There, there you go. It is. It's a special first, though. This is kind of the beginning of spring. It's the first. It's a Monday. <laughs> season. This is season seven. Love Supreme. So love yourself and get a fresh start on uh, everything that you got to do. Do a little reset if you're not already doing that. Uh, that was kind of message for me today is remember that we're all in a state of reset. Yeah, man. Man, uh, really quickly before we get out of here, Sherman Wells, thank you for that, man. This is beautiful, beautiful types of things that we like to see come out of this platform. If we did any good, uh, that, that's 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 the, the the intention behind this. He says, thank you, uh, Sal. And I'm thinking Sally Saka uh, from the Simple Foundation was watching the show and has agreed to sponsor a billboard hey. for Mr. Blake. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Sal. Thank you, Brother Sherman Wells um, and anybody else, you know, willing to assist in the search uh, for Mr. Levi Blake. Man, that's what it's talk. That's what it's all about, man. Community coming coming together uh, again. We're stronger together, man. So I appreciate that. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep growing. Yes, sir. And with that, peace.
Yeah, man, we're going to get out of here. We're going to give uh, thanks to the Umaha tribe elders for allowing us to be on this land and speak while we're here. Shout out to our elders for allowing us to speak before them. And shout out to you, the chat, the chat chimers, allowing us to speak with you. I can't do this show without you, so thank you very much for your participation. Uh, we will see you Wednesday. We uh, will we'll possibly have a special guest coming on Wednesday as well, so stay tuned for that. And we'll be definitely continuing the conversations here and on Friends of First Sky Omaha, the group page on Facebook. Check us out over there and keep dropping those articles for the things that you think is relevant to us that need to be discussed. Man. So thank you, for, thank you again for that, and we'll see you soon. Peace. Peace. By the way, Red